Looking live at the Auto Club Speedway of Southern California, where race number two of the NASCAR Nationwide Series goes green. A little less than an hour from now, the car is beginning to form on the grid. The drivers will begin to be being introduced to the fans momentarily, and we're getting set up for some great NASCAR action at very high speeds. Qualifying for this race held late this morning local time. Carl Edwards fired off a lap two tenths of a second quicker than Kyle Busch. That's a lot in racing terms. Then the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series took to the speedway. They ran a 200 miler. Kyle Busch in that 51 truck dominated, leading 95 of the 100 laps, which sets the stage for our nationwide series race now. Vince Welch with our pole sitter Carl Edwards moments ago. Not only a pole qualifying run, but a convincing one at that, almost two tenths of a quicker uh, second quicker than uh, Kyle Busch. Uh, is that qualifying run indicative of how good a race car you have? I hope so, Vince. Uh, you know, I think that this Scott's Fusion is, is real fast, but, you know, th these races at this this track, you know, we get long runs. The uh, the balance of the car, you know, mechanically and aero wise is so important, and you really don't know. Uh, you know, the last time we were here, I chased Kyle around, and that car was, you know, unbeatable. And I, I hope our, our Scott's Fusion is that good this time, but the, the qualifying was great. Practice was great, and I hope the race goes as well. And the position on the track, much more important than a week ago at Daytona. Yeah, the position is important. You can pass very, you know, really well here, pass easily if your car is good. But, uh, man, I'll take that first pit stall and uh, starting on the pole any day. This is cool. Carl Edwards, he'll start from the point today. All right, Vince, thanks. So you got Carl Edwards on the pole. Kyle Busch, who's already won a race today, starting outside of the front row with him for this race. This is shaping up to be a fabulous duel. Absolutely. And you've got two of the best guys in racing, period, going to go head to head. This is going to be an outstanding race. I look for these guys to be up front all day battling. I tell you what, in practice, both their cars really handled strong, and they looked on top of their game. And Carl Edwards, I tell you what, he knows how to get around the racetrack. The problem is, Kyle Busch does too. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a great matchup between those two. Now, we'll talk more about today's race in just a little while. First, Need some clean up some unfinished business from the Daytona race a week ago. The controversial moment of that event was a, a big wreck three quarters of the way through, begun with contact between Jason Leffler in the 38 and Stephen Wallace in the 66. Contact that got Leffler penalized five laps for rough driving. A week later, both drivers discuss it with Dave Burns side by side. You may be surprised to see these two this close this soon after Daytona, but we've asked Jason Leffler and Steve Wallace to join us here and talk about last week's wreck at the big track. Jason, we're going to have you describe what happened looking at that monitor at Daytona. Sure. I was, uh, you can see me up on the inside of the 66 there. I was just trying to get in line, and uh, Steven was just minding his own business and got turned and wrecked. I don't know. I, I guess a little guy couldn't see over the steering wheel. It's just, uh, you know, I didn't really hate it for all our U.S. Fidelis guys on my team. You know, we had a really, really fast race car. It's just, uh, it's just a shame, you know. I never had a problem with Jason. I don't know what happened. I, I just felt like I was on the top side, just had my wheel straight, you know, just draft it up top, and I got hooked in the left for a quarter panel. So our cameras leave. You guys go back to the motorcoach lot, and there's this huge fight, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was a big one. Cops got involved, the whole deal. Uh, yeah. We were both went to jail over it. No, but I'm just kidding. It, it, was, it was just a, uh, it's just a tough deal, just a you know. Joke. Jason Leffler still sitting there, got to serve a five-lap penalty. Now he spent five laps sitting on pit road for that aggressive driving, as NASCAR called it. You think that was the right call? I think it's a 50-50 deal. I think if he did it to me, he'd say, uh, <laughs> yeah. But if I did it to him, he'd say, yeah, too. They must have obviously thought it was really intentional, but it was far from intentional. You know? We saw you pleading your case with NASCAR. What did you say to them, and what did they say to you? I can't repeat it. <laughs> we race around each other really well and get along well, and, and um, I felt really bad about, about crashing them. I think I came by the one lap later, and he threw something at me. I don't know what it was. Water bottle. Line water drive bottle. The door. I was glad to see that thing come flying, because, you know, I mean, Daytona, first thing when you see a wreck or you cause a wreck, you're going to oh, everything, everybody's all right, and they were. So um, just one of those deals we're here in California. <laughs> well, these guys are super competitive. They've got 34 more races. Races, and I'm assuming at that time, somewhere in there, they'll be side-by-side <laughs> by side again. <laughs> now, that center, Saturday penalty to Jason Leffler, together with this wreck in Sunday's Daytona 500, between Brian Vickers in the 83 and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88, created the week's most reacted to story in racing. NASCAR ruled Leffler's contact with Wallace was intentional, while Earnhardt's with Vickers was not, and Jr. was not penalized. Certainly, the email bag blew up on this one for much of the week. Thoughts on the decision to penalize one and not the other, and what NASCAR officials have said about this incident? Well, from NASCAR's point of view, looking at that race when the 66 got turned by the 38, it looked intentional. So there has to be justification, and there was. With that wreck with Junior and Brian Vickers, I think that Brian Vickers 
actually crowded down. He tried to block Junior. So Junior getting into him was more of an incidental situation than anything. And I think that NASCAR was right. Yeah, so, all I can tell you, there's many races left to go. And these drivers need to get over. And I think that Steven and Jason have. Uh, they, we've all talked. Everything's cool right there. A lot of racing now. And we all got to get along. Yeah, on to the next one, as uh, happens every week in racing. So now Daytona's in the rearview mirror. And we turn our attention to this race and this place. A really wide, fast two-mile track with only moderate uh, banking. 14 degrees here versus 31 at Daytona. Put us behind the wheel. What's the challenge for a driver here? Oh, I tell you, the challenge right here is a good handling race car. The track is real fast, as you see. Cars are arcing down into turn one right now. A lot of bumps right there. You see the car jumping around. Shock absorbers are very, very important. It's been a challenge for all these crew guys to get the car handling good. Now you see this long back straightaway. I tell you, a lot of passing there, Alan. Getting into the corners at high speeds. Big challenge here at California. Now, you recall last season, the Chevy teams in the Nationwide Series were lobbying NASCAR to have the R07 model engine approved for use here, saying they needed it to compete with the Toyotas. Well, they got it. <laughs> with more, let's go to our Craftsman Tech Garage. Here's Tim Brewer. Tim? Thanks, Alan. You're exactly right. They lobbied for the new R07 generation engine, and they got it. But when they did that, they also got the same restrictor plate. When you ran the SB2 engine, you had a, a restrictor plate, a tapered plate that was one inch, 125 thousandths. Now they come back with a Toyota plate. The SB2 guys in the Chevrolet, they have to run the same plate as Toyota does, and it's an inch, 100 thousandths. So by giving up that 16 horsepower, they got this different re tapered restrictor plate. But still yet, it's, it'll be proven today on the racetrack who has the most horsepower between the Toyotas and the Chevrolets. All right, thank you, Tim. And we have a whole lot more to tell you about in the short time before the green flag waves. For more on what we're going to report on, let's bring in our reporters. Here's Jamie Little. Well, Alan, over the last year, Brad Kozlowski has proven to be a championship contender. But today, he has one obstacle in his way, this racetrack. In seven NASCAR starts, he's only finished one race. Coming up, I'm going to interview Brad and ask him about overcoming Fontana. Dave Burns. Earlier today, Jamie Kyle Busch dominated a truck series race, left everybody scrapping for all the scraps that they could get their hands on. We'll talk to Kyle Busch in just a little while and find out if he can do the same thing today in the Nationwide Series. Shannon Spake. Dave, after serving a six-month suspension, the Joe Gibbs Racing crew chief duo of Jason Ratcliffe and Dave Rogers are back on top of the pit box here today. Coming up on Countdown, I will talk to Dave Rogers about being back at the track and working with Joey Logano. Vince Welch. Well, the name game continues for Richard Childress racing here today. Remember, Clint Boyer, Stephen Light, and Jeff Burton, the driver of the three that has the best average finish after the July Daytona race, gets his name right here on top of the driver's window the rest of the season, regardless of who's driving. Boyer was third at Daytona last week. Burton gets his first crack today. Alan? All right, Vince, all that and more when NASCAR Countdown continues from Southern California. Look at that. They took our sign. There is the car to be driven by Brad Keselowski today, who figures to be one of the championship contenders in the Nationwide Series this season. The 25-year-old Michigan native gave us all access to his season opener at Daytona last week. Off we go. Whoosh. I got you, bud. Thanks for your support. Thank you, man. Hey, did you know today was Valentine's Day? Yeah. I did not. I got my Valentine's panties on. Seriously, I do. I do, dude. Man, I came prepared. You're the man. I'm trying really hard for this year to uh, to stay relaxed and stay focused, stay calmer. Because I noticed last year that when I had more fun racing, that I did better. So that's kind of my goal for this year. This is part of the experience, the walking through traffic, the Brad Keselowski experience. I'm a Bob and Weaver right here. Bob. Oh, wait. Which way is he going? I'm going to go try and make some alliances in the driver intros line because I'm going to need all the help I can get. Look at that, man. Like I planned. All right, go. Thanks, guys. Daytona is a handling racetrack, so uh, you know, we all try to work together as best we can. Thank you very much. About the time I put the helmet on, it's about perfect. That's why I don't like anybody else walking up to me. That's like, now I'm there. Now I'm the race car driver. Brad Dale Jarrett, DSB, and you have a copy? Yeah, 10 4 Dale got you last clear. All right, are you looking to move straight forward right here from the very beginning? I'm going to be aggressive. It's going to be a good show, I can guarantee you that. Get ready. Crank, crank, crank. All clear in front of you there. Everything's rolling in front of you. 
Are we catching them, Pop? Yep, team four, you're catching them. Go, go, go. Looks like you might have the car to beat. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a good showdown. It's actually to the outside. Seems to go three wide here. Oh! Trouble! Into the outside wall, Keselowski, that's gonna scramble up the pack. Yeah, I got a tire rub. Yeah, but just blew. My bad, guys, we're doing all I can here, I'm sorry. Some lug nuts over You gotta take the tire off, take it off, beat it out with a hammer, whatever you gotta do. We gotta can't be rubbing. Thanks for an awesome car, guys. Sorry about that. When it comes to Daytona, I'd rather win than worry about points. We might be running for a championship. I'm running for a win. Fast car. Well, Brad, Brad Keselowski seems to be a threat anywhere we go these days until we get to Fontana. Five nationwide starts, two truck starts, you've only finished one race. What is it about Fontana? I don't know. Uh, you know, I enjoy coming here. It's beautiful weather, beautiful scenery, but this place has just been mean to me. Uh, you know, I feel like if you look at last year, the two bad races we had here took us out of the championship. So uh, hopefully that won't be the case here today with the GoGetty.com Chevrolet, and we can run up front and get a good points finish and maybe even compete for a win. All right, today is certainly an important one. He rolls off lucky number 13, Alan. All right, Jamie, thanks. Uh, our J-Ski News and Notes here. NASCAR handing out some penalties for inspection violations at Daytona. Crew chief fines ranging from 15 grand to five grand plus probation. The owners and drivers dock points. You know how that whole thing works by now. Lots of wondering what the car count would look like for this race. 47 turned out versus 47 a year ago. And Jason Ratcliffe and Dave Rogers, the crew chiefs for Joe Gibbs Racing, who were suspended last summer for their chassis dyno test altering incident, are back at the racetrack this week. The 20 car goes to victory lane once again. Dave and I go back a long way because of the Cup Series, and he got the opportunity he deserved over here, and he has made the most of it. He's having one of those dream seasons like Kyle's having, so uh, you know, just really proud of him and his guys. Uh, yesterday was the day that we were going to chassis dyno um, cars, and uh, our inspectors discovered some shims that were placed on the gas pedal stop. It was magnets that were about a quarter inch thick that prevented the accelerator from going 100% wide open. No matter what NASCAR does, we're going to address those issues in-house. Figure out exactly what happened, and those that were responsible, hey, there's going to be a punishment for that. You know, that's just part of life, and you can't do that and, and put everyone else at risk. Well, the Gibbs teams were performing at an incredible level last season before the suspensions, but even without their leaders at the track, they were no slouches, winning five times and scoring 17 top tens of a possible 22. The Gibbs cars start second and seventh today, Shannon. Alan, it certainly was a tremendous season last year for the 20 team. Dave Rogers, of course, had to spend 11 of those races watching them from Charlotte, North Carolina. What was the hardest part of not being at the racetrack? Uh, the toughest part was just loading the truck and uh, saying goodbye to the guys. You know, that's my second family, and uh, I missed them while they're here racing. I feel like I let them down being at the shop. But, uh, you know, Doug Hewitt did a great job for us and secured that championship. So uh, we'll take it and move on. All right, speaking of Doug Hewitt, Joey, you worked with several different crew chiefs during that time. What is different about Dave Rogers' leadership? What does he bring to you? Uh, Dave's just, he's been there, done that. You know, he's done it for a while. You know, he, with working with a bunch of different drivers, uh, he just brings a lot of confidence back to the whole team. Even me as a driver, the whole team here, I think uh, everyone's more confident all through practice yesterday. So uh, hopefully it's like the good old days today. All right, the good old days. Of course, the good old days. The 20 dominated here at Fontana last season. And Joey Logano rolls off seventh. All right, Shannon, thanks. Good to see both Dave and uh, Jason Ratcliffe at the racetrack once again. You know, as team owners, you both uh, know the importance of uh, a crew chief and that leadership at the racetrack. How do you explain what the Gibbs teams did with their leadership back at the shop instead of here? Well, Alan, one thing I've noticed, they got a lot of depth. They also <laughs> got a lot of backup people. But one thing you got to remember, those crew chiefs were still at the race shop. They were still preparing those cars that they work on all the time. They just handed a mission off to the crew chief that went and did it that day while they were gone. Now, you look at them every week and you say, Man, they never change anything. They're always so prepared, and I can tell you, they are prepared. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with again this year, but back at the shops where it all starts. That is very, very, very much true. What happens with great race teams is when they come to the racetrack and unload their race car, they only adjust on it. You work on the race car back at the race shop. You don't come to the racetrack to work, and the guys that dominate are the guys that tweak it just a little bit. When it rolls off the truck, it's fast, and that's what happens with Joe Gibbs Racing. A driver doesn't drive for a while, might be a little rust when he first gets in for practice. What about a crew chief? You see any rust on Dave Rogers or Jason Ratcliffe No, here? I don't think 
see anything right. there at all. I mean, they're back in the shop. They're ready to go. I mean, these guys are hungry to get back in their back. All right, Kyle Busch, have talent, will race. You see Kyle there walking toward the grid. He's competing in all three NASCAR National Series races here, which is made for a busy Saturday. This morning, he qualified his nationwide car, second fastest, not bad. Jumped out of that, ran the Camping World Truck Series 200 miler. He dominated, led 95 of 100 laps for the win. After victory lane, it was off to final practice for the Sprint Cup car. Uh, sprinting to his cup <laughs> car, you might say. Uh, Kyle starts 10th tomorrow in search of a win. He's got some points to make up after that Daytona 500 crash. Uh, and now he's ready to run 300 more miles, and he already has people talking about a possible weekend sweep, Dave. And as we continue toward the grid with Kyle and uh, young fan getting a uh, nice number 18 sign there. The uh, Nationwide 18 will be your focus here, Kyle, in just a few minutes. How did it perform in practice and how close is it to being as good as the truck was earlier today? Uh, it performed real well in practice. We actually ended just a little bit early because we felt pretty good about it. I felt pretty good about it. So we'll see how it starts out here today and uh, into the night and, you know, what changes on it. But uh, feel pretty confident that the Z-Line designs my, uh, Camry should do pretty well, so we're looking forward to it. Uh, what else can I say? How uh, much better are these triple header weekends when they start out with a W? Uh, they're a lot better, that's, that's for sure, especially in the same day. It's been a busy day, that's for sure, so I'm looking forward to going home and laying down on the couch here tonight and uh, getting some rest for tomorrow. But uh, besides that, you know, I think we've got another good shot here with this car. It's awfully fast, too. He has been on the move, practice racing, debriefing, keeping all of that information straight for three very different types of race cars, Alan. All right, David, thank you. Uh, you know, Kyle's just, he's got a great record of success here at this particular racetrack. Rusty, you've been there before. Bristol, Richmond come to mind. Is there a real practical way coming to a track where you've just got a wonderful record helps a driver? Absolutely. And when I think of Kyle Busch, the first thing that comes to my mind is that he's a very, very fast driver. I mean, he qualifies good. He runs fast in practice. And this particular racetrack here in California, hey, man, we're running over 200 miles an hour getting into the corner. So this is a fast racetrack. And when I think about California, I do think about Kyle Busch. We really need to appreciate Kyle Busch and his talent. I mean, this is incredible what he does. And first and foremost, he is a racer's racer. The one thing that he does, though, he gets in all three of these divisions. He's going to race. Most guys can't do that because yeah. they just run out of talent. This guy is so talented. We really need to appreciate this. Can you imagine playing, playing, you know, back to back to back basketball no, games on no. the same day? I could barely play the one game. <laughs> <I was before. laughs> now, Rusty, I know you're very focused on racing, but you do know that this is Academy Awards weekend in L.A. <laughs> I do. Surrounding us. So, so we asked some drivers if they made a movie about your life, who would you want to play you? <laughs> If there was a movie about my life, who would be good as me? Well, Tom Cruise. I mean, we look alike. We're getting deep now. Harrison Ford. When the chips are down, he's tough as hell. That's how I am sometimes. <laughs> I always like the guy that was Zach on Saved by the Bell. What was his name? Somebody looks way better than I do. Ben Stiller. Or maybe Jerry Stiller. No, Ben. Maybe Jerry one day. <laughs> <laughs> so who's going to be the star of the show today? Oh, very good. Like that? Yeah. NASCAR Countdown returns to Southern California. A lap at Fontana. Man, I don't have a very good track record at Fontana. Are you sure you want to hear that from me? Oh, crash, big, oh, gosh. That was a hard run. I think I'm okay, guys. I think if you just review my footage, from California, you might decide that I'm not a credible source. The surface is kind of unique where it doesn't seem to have a lot of grip in certain areas and it's, it's, it's got some, some bumps that give it some character. You're not sure if it's gonna stick, how well it's gonna stick, what the car's gonna do. You're always working pretty hard inside the car. The straightaways are really long. You really stay out against the wall a long time. It feels like it, there's absolutely no banking at all. When you're going into the corner at 210 miles an hour, it feels like you're just gonna roll right over. Just a little bit of what to expect in 300 miles of racing at the Auto Club Speedway of Southern California. That's tonight's challenge. Then uh, the rest of the weekend is also filled with lots of motorsports action for you here on ESPN2. Drag racing from Phoenix, the NHRA Arizona Nationals qualifying. That's midnight tonight on ESPN2. NASCAR Now, Sprint Cup pre-race edition, Sunday morning, 10 Eastern time. The NHRA finals from Phoenix at 7 Eastern Sunday. Our NASCAR Now Monday roundtable wrapping up all the California action Monday. And then it's on to Vegas, baby. <laughs> Next Saturday, 4 Eastern time for our NASCAR Nationwide Series coverage here on ESPN2. 
driver introductions ongoing. There's the stage set up at the start finish line of the Speedway and the field of 43 being introduced now as they walk across the stage and they'll begin to head for their cars and begin buckling in in just a little while. So Richard Childress Racing's 29 cars sitting on the grid. Jeff Burton behind the wheel in this event. It's lined up sixth. Uh, winning the race today is the goal, but for this team, there's another game being played at the same time. Clint got his feelings hurt because at our photo shoot, my name was on the roof of the car. I was like, why does he get his name on the door? I've been driving a car, Holiday Inn car for a couple years and won, you know, quite a few races in it. I don't, I don't know what he thought was going to happen. He was the reigning champion, so he, you know, thought he needed a little respect. So we made a wager. I might need to get this in writing. But at some point in the year, whoever has won the most races gets to put their name on the car. Luckily for me, my first four races are like three of my best tracks. You know, just a little more incentive for us to go out and win. To be able to say that, oh look, Jeff Burden, or hey look, Boyer's driving the car with my name on it. I know it would eat at Clint, because Clint was already talking about, man, I, I really hope I don't have to drive this car without my name on it. I just really want to see Jeff Burton climb in uh, my car with my name on it. I think it'd be great. It's my car. They're just borrowing it every now and then. It's, it's my car. And there is Jeff Burton live on stage accepting an award for the team from some of the Daytona action a week ago. Uh, we'll see who wins the name game. There's the breakdown, or here is the breakdown, of who will drive how many races in that 29 car this season as those drivers together pursue the owner's championship in the Nationwide Series for Richard Childress Racing. You see Burton up for a dozen, and again tonight he starts in the sixth position. Now, if I have this right, he's walking down the steps from that stage and right up to our Dave Burns. And we, uh, you, you judge correctly, Alan. Uh, we're just getting out of the infield here for Jeff to get to his race car. And uh, we just talked about the name game. This is your first chance to uh, put the W in your column. How good's the race car, Jeff? I think it's really good. Um, track's going to change a lot. You know, it's going to cool down a lot. And, uh, you know, we fought getting looser here when the sun goes down, which is exactly opposite of what I would think. So we were a little bit loose yesterday. I hope I'm not too loose tonight. But uh, I think they've done a really nice job, and I'm ready to go. So. Will these overcast skies help that transition, the sun going down in turn three? Yeah, I think it will. And uh, it's going to, you know, it won't have quite the change that we, if it was sunny and, and uh, you know, it, and then it cooled down a lot. So I don't think we'll see quite the transition that we see here like in, in the fall. All right, Jeff Burton in the 29 car today. And certainly wouldn't uh, rule out Jeff Burton being a really strong performer here. Talked about that R07 engine for the Chevys, Rusty, and then, then really wanting it for this season. Your team fields Chevrolets, the team that you own. Feel like you're on a par with the Toyotas now? Well, I don't think anybody really knows right now, but this particular racetrack is a good place to judge. You think about California, you think about Michigan. Some of the tracks with the long straightaways where horsepower really shows up. I know the Chevy guys wanted that R07. They got it now, but I'll tell you, while they're getting R07, the Toyotas are still working hard, too. So, I mean, everybody's working hard. They all want the big power. And, Brad, all this talk about Chevy, Toyota, there's another group out there. That's the Fords. Yes, and, absolutely. And, you know, we wanted, wondered where they stand in relation to the Chevys and the Toyotas. Well, let's see. we got all three Roush Fenway Fords qualified <laughs> in the top ten here. Yeah, I talked to Dan Stillman, the crew chief on Carl Edwards, number 60 car, as well as David Reagan, the driver. And both of these guys said that they feel like the power plants in all three vehicles are pretty, pretty similar. There's no big advantage to anyone. Very, very racy. It looks like Ford, though, has got it figured out. Carl Edwards starting on the pole, and it would certainly be no surprise to see a Roush Fenway car in victory lane at the end of these 300 miles tonight because the Cat in the Hat has a remarkable record in the Nationwide Series at this track. 39 entries, 6 wins, 25 top 10s, and again, all three of those cars, Reagan, Biffle, and Edwards, in the top 10 on the starting grid tonight. Let's hear from the Biff with Vince. Greg Biffle making a lot of fans happy with the autographs today, and he's happy with the race car as well. We keep hearing about how difficult this track is for the crew chiefs to get a handle on. You've won here three times, led more laps than anyone. What clicks for you at this racetrack? Well, I tell you, it's uh, you know, it's a fun racetrack because it's so difficult, so different from end to end. Turn one and two is so different than three and four. And uh, you get your car going good in one end, and then you know, you're not so good at the other. So it is very difficult. You almost have to sacrifice one end, and uh, you know, really have the driver has to adapt to that. Uh, to be faster both ends. I got a car, City Financial Ford Fusion. Uh, car running really good today, so uh, I'm excited. It's been a while since you've won here. 73 uh, years, uh, August or uh, 2006, I guess it was. 75 races. Do you feel like you've got one that can break that streak today? I hope so. I'm glad it's not 73 years. I'm glad it's only three. 
But uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we have a good enough car to, to win today. And uh, there's just a lot of tough cars in this field, this nationwide field. It's very competitive, so we'll see what we can do. Drivers talk about how loose their race cars are at this track, and there's not many better driving a loose race car than Greg Biffle. All right, Vince, thanks to Biff taking the green from the fifth spot on the grid tonight. He's lucky that car's in one piece. This was Friday morning's opening practice here. Oh, man, I tell you what, you know, you got to have a good driver, you got to have power, but you also got to have a little bit of luck. Take a look at this. Big spin off of turn two, doesn't hit anything, spins around, gets that baby stopped, gets some tires on it, gets it woed down, and guys, I got to tell you, Sometimes you'd rather have luck to be good. Oh, yeah, you see that off a of turn two here a lot, too, because it's such a transition as you come off the corner and the straightaway just flattens out so hard. That car looked perfectly settled, and before you know it, he was spinning. God, Greg told crew chief Eddie Pardue, ah, I was just pushing a little harder than I should have been. <laughs> so he's got it in one piece and getting ready to go from fifth spot on the grid. Now, Kevin Harvick's 33 car is lined up ninth on the grid. Kevin is our in-race reporter today. He's with Shannon right now. Alan, it's been a great year so far. Two races for Kevin Harvick in this 33 car. Last week, you said that you had your cars prepared up until Bristol. How much has that preparation helped you get a strong start to the season? Well, we had a great car last week, and the uh, driver just made a bad move there at the end, but our Ream Chevrolet is has been good. Uh, we unloaded well today or yesterday, whatever day it was, and uh, hopefully we can have a good race today. So we just got to keep uh, keep ourselves in contention and keep ourselves um, running where we need to run, and, and the rest of it will take care of itself. A lot of people are looking at the 18 and the 60 cars, the dominant cars in this race. Can your Chevy take on the Toyota and the Ford of those two cars? Well, we hope so. It's, um, you know, it's like I say, it's been really good in practice, and just got to do put together a whole night, and that's, that's what it's all about. You can't make any mistakes, and, and you have to have a fast car. All right, Kevin Harvick down here with the 33 car rolled off ninth. All right, Shannon, thanks. So we'll keep an eye on Harv trying to win uh, here on his, uh, what would be a, a home track, not yep. far from Bakersfield here. And he's our in-race reporter. DJ looking for suggestions for questions. Log on to ESPN, uh, ESPN.com. Easy for you to say. Yeah, don't try this at home. I'm a trained <laughs> professional. Keyword, ask the driver, and uh, we'll see if your question gets used for Kevin Harvick during tonight's action. Last week's season opener at Daytona saw the front of the finishing order dominated by some of the Sprint Cup guys. You kind of would expect that at Daytona, but some nationwide series regulars had some great results. You see Jason Keller with the top 10, a lot of other guys, top 20 results, and that Michael McDowell. He's got a great starting spot for tonight's race. Let's hear from him. And Alan, it's all the way up there at the front of the grid. Michael's been walking for like 10 minutes already, but that's a good walk, isn't it, qualifying third? Yeah, it feels good. You know, I'm just really proud of our guys at JTG Doherty Racing. And we, uh, we put this program together very late. And so for us to come here and sort of uh, have the performance we did in qualifying, I'm, I'm really happy about it. And I uh, just want to thank Gene Need and all the guys back at the shop for working hard. And we got Pacific Packaging Group with us this weekend, and uh, we can't wait to uh, expand that program. What was it about that lap? I mean, did you know this is a car that I can maybe contend for the pole with, or to just kind of, hey, this stuck and it's great. Well, a little bit of both. We had a really good race car, and we were really happy in race trim. Uh, we didn't know where we'd be qualifying trim. We were hoping somewhere in the top ten, but uh, going out early, and we, the car was just great. So I just kept my foot in it, and we were able to get a good lap. All right, keep an eye on Michael. He's in that white number 47 today. Alan? That name Darty on the front of his uniform. Yes, sir. Boy, boy's done you well so far. He's done a fine job. There you go, and we wish him well in tonight's race. Now, don't forget our driver pick em game presented by Nationwide Insurance at ESPN.com. You can search Nationwide and make your picks from the selected matchups for tonight's race and every race throughout the Nationwide Series season. Um, our boys were perfect in their picks at Daytona last week. Perfectly awful. <laughs> As in, everybody's over so far. So we move on to tonight's race, and who did our guys pick, up, pick out from some of the matchups? Rusty had the Keller, uh, Scott Legacy Jr. matchup. He picked Keller. Uh, Brad has the uh, Kenny Wallace, uh, Michael Lynette matchup. He's gone with uh, Kenny Wallace, and it's in a backup car after a qualifying crash. And Ray, via email, has picked Stephen Wallace. Oh, in the very good. battle of the co-analyst team owner thing yeah. <laughs> between the 66 <laughs> and 47 cars. All right, let's talk about it. 300 miles on this very fast two-mile racetrack without a whole ton of banking. One thing that's normally a factor here is visibility going into turn three with bright sun glare overcast tonight. That takes out 
that as something to watch for. What are we watching for in this race? Uh, in my mind, the number one thing you got to watch for is a changing track conditions. We're going to start during the day and end at night. And these cars, the way they handle when they start the race and when they finish, are going to be way different. I expect to see different guys at the end of the race up front than I do at the beginning. I agree with you. Mid-pack guys who are really fast can take advantage. This racetrack also creates a significant draft. A lot of people don't think that when we come here. But you can utilize the draft on the front and back straight away. If you're smart, you'll keep gaining positions throughout the day. We're going to see who the smart racers are. Some of what to watch for is 43 drivers go 300 miles at the Auto Club Speedway of Southern California. Kyle Busch starting on the front row. He's already won once today. ESPN's exclusive coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series in Southern California for race number two of the 2009 season. Let's go trackside for the opening ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your hats as the Centurion Battalion Accession Task Force, California Army National Guard, presents our nation's colors. And now, please welcome Jeff Hamilton from Motor Racing Outreach as he delivers our invocation. Good evening. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, even while we're here enjoying tonight's great event, this night of racing, the things that are truly important from us are never far from our mind. That is the love of our family and friends, which is a continual reminder of your love for us. Thank you for your protection and provision since all good things truly come from you. Bless tonight's event with your grace. Amen. And now, race fans, please remain standing and welcome Mercury Records' new recording artist, Jesse James, as she performs our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early Broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. So the teams are ready. Time for the drivers to climb aboard and buckle in. The green flag flies in Southern California just moments from now. NASCAR Nationwide Series in California, presented by GoDaddy.com, where you can make the web your domain with a .com name for less than a buck a month. And in part by Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin'. And Toyota, moving forward. Nice to see the boss and Mrs. Mouse on hand here in Southern California for the race. Absolutely. We love it. And now it's time to get ready to go. Have you regained your composure over there yet? <laughs> you got me cracking up. I'm telling you what. We are all <laughs> set to go here in the pit studio for tonight's race of weather conditions. Very nice. 70 degrees. It is overcast, which again helps the drivers by eliminating that blind spot down the back straightaway into turn three in these day and tonight races. So that'll be a big plus. And we hope the action on the track is, uh, is every bit deserving 
of an Academy Award by the oh, end of the night. Oh, very nice. Let's go upstairs to our three leading men. Uh, oh, oh, Doc, Dr. Jerry Punch, Dale Jarrett, and Andy Petrie. <laughs> Doc, he wanted me to call you our three comedians, but I didn't do that. <laughs> Otherwise known as uh, Daffy uh, and Goofy. We got, we, I think we had, we had Mickey and Minnie here a moment ago, guys. Hey, hey, nice job down there, by the way. And hello, everyone. Glad to have you with us. You know, the adjustments are always huge when you go from restrictor plate drafting in Daytona to four wide drifting here in Fontana. Now, but this year, there are many more unknowns than ever before, guys. Why? Well, the biggest thing is no testing during the offseason, and that's put these guys, some have built new cars. They have no idea what to do there. They haven't been able to try new things. Uh, the other thing is they, these guys have a tire rule for the weekend, so they were limited on the number of sets they have. They don't want to use up a lot of those sets. They want to make sure in the race they have enough good sets to put on if we should have some caution to do that, so it limited their practice time. So a lot of unknowns for these guys tonight. Yeah, but it really rewards the preparation at the shop that these guys have put in. The guys up front have done a lot of work back at the shop, and they've prepared these cars well, and that's what this new era of no testing is going to do. The guys that really work hard in the shop are going to be the ones that will be rewarded on race day. You know, several teams have said that this worn surface here reminds them of an old Darlington. Now, what do they mean by that, and how does that impact the race? Well, what they mean by Darlington, the old Darlington, was how the surface would just got so worn out that you really don't have any grip. And that's what's happening here. You don't have a lot of grip here, but you got a lot of width. This track is a lot wider than Darlington, and it's a lot bigger. you got a lot of speed getting in the corners. You're going to see these guys literally drift through the corners. I know Kyle Busch will and Carl Edwards. Those guys are going to be basically sideways through the corner, and that's what you get here. And it's a high-speed, high-stakes drifting game. Yeah, and these guys would trade some of that width that they have for a little more banking and a lot more grip. But uh, it makes for a lot of fun, and they can. we're going to see these guys two, three, and sometimes four wide during the corners and down the straightaway. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. This race starts in the daylight and will end after dark. Drivers getting buckled in here in the final minutes before the command. Now, are all you Miley Cyrus fans, listen up, folks, because no, it's not Miley, but her dad, Billy Ray Cyrus, is standing by to give the command to get everybody fired up here at Auto Club Speedway of Southern California. So let's go trackside now and get the command to get underway for 300 miles here tonight. Race fans, it's now time for the most famous words in motorsports. Would you please welcome back your Grand Marshal, country music superstar, and star of the upcoming film, Hannah Montana the Movie, Billy Ray Cyrus. Drivers, start your engines. Engines have fired and we are just moments away from rolling these cars and getting started here in Fontana, California. When we return, we'll visit with a two-time series champion, Kevin Harvick, who grew up in nearby Bakersfield, California. He has done everything you can do at this racetrack, but win here. We'll talk to him in just a moment. The, the day's activities began here at Fontana in the early morning with NASCAR Nationwide Series qualifying, and cousin Carl had him covered. By over two-tenths of a second, he puts his Ford on the pole for the second time here at Auto Club Speedway of Southern California. He'll be flanked on the front row by Kyle Busch. And while you watch to see where your favorite driver will start, why don't we visit with the driver of the Ream Chevrolet, our in-race reporter, Kevin Harvick, who starts back in ninth here tonight. Hey, Kevin, Dale Jarrett, the ESPN, you have a copy? Kevin, Dale Jarrett, the ESPN, you have a copy? That's you. Hey, Kevin, first, thanks for doing this tonight. Uh, how much adjustability have you put into your setup to go from daylight to dark, or will you just mainly be using air pressure wedge in your track bar tonight? For the most part tonight, we'll just be using those things. Uh, I think our car was just, we were just a little bit loose in practice yesterday, and we, you know, thinking uh, going into tonight, you know, maybe we could uh, adjust it if we were still too loose, so. Hopefully it uh, does what we think it should do, and we'll go from there with our Ream Chevrolet. 
Okay, Kevin, our second question comes from our ESPN.com mailbag, and Jeremy in Wynette, Illinois, would like to know, how rewarding would it be for you as an owner to get your first win in your own equipment, and I'll add, especially here in your home state? That would be pretty cool. Uh, we've had a lot of success at this racetrack, just never a win. So uh, maybe we can knock both of those things down. I know these guys have put a lot of work and effort into everything that we've done this year and, and every other year. So uh, looking to get that, that first barrier knocked down so we can keep them going forward. All right, Kevin, thanks again for talking with us tonight. Now Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Ernie Cope. Hey, Ernie, Andy Petra in the booth. You got us? Yeah, I got you. Hey, Ernie, work with me here just a minute. We've been hearing so much about Kevin winning his first race in the KHI equipment. Tell us now, how big a bonus is Kevin going to give you to get that first win here? You have to ask him that. Uh, I just love where we all work so hard that we can get it tonight. That would be good. Well, we got him on the phone right here. You want me to help you negotiate a deal? Uh, I'm sure everything will be fine. <laughs> okay, Ernie, good luck tonight and hope you guys do get that first win. Okay, thank you. Kevin Harvey carrying an onboard camera. We'll have onboard cameras in seven other cars, including uh, Brad Keselowski in the GoDaddy.com. Chevy starting back in 13th. Keep an eye, by the way, on Brian Vickers. A lot of people in the garage area starting back in 12th spot. I believe he will be a car, one of the cars to watch here tonight. We will also have a camera and microphone in our over-the-wall driver, over-the-wall crew member, Ricky Puddin Coleman out of Orlando, Florida, the rear tire carrier for Jason Leffler. So let's have a little bit of uh, Andy Petrie to Puddin conversation. <laughs> hey, Ricky, you got us up here? Yes, sir, Mr. Petrie. Tell us a little bit about what it's like now. You're on uh, three different pit crews this weekend with the Truck Series, the Nationwide Series, and the Sprint Cup Series. Tell us about how different these race vehicles are to make pit stops with. Well, I mean, you know, Basically, between the trucks, the Nationwide Series, and the, the Sprint Cup Series, all the uh, all the cars have a different shape in the back of them. The trucks, obviously, are a lot longer. Uh, the Nationwide cars are a lot shorter. Um, and all you're really doing is, you know, you're just adjusting to those those vehicles. Um, you know, getting around the car is where you're making up a lot of the times now, with, especially with the rule changes and the stud lengths. Uh, you know, you make up a lot of your times. Mistake-free pit stops and, and getting around the car. Um, as far as... The differences in the cars, there's, uh, you know, the nationwide and the uh, and the trucks are much tighter quarter panels, so you have to be careful when you're putting the tire on the hub that you're not hitting the quarter panels, costing yourself time on pit road. Uh, fortunately, in the on the Sprint Cup side of things, the uh, the um, the fenders are are basically all standard because of the the COT car, so those are actually a lot easier to carry tires on than the Cups in the nationwide series. Okay, Ricky, I'm sure you're gonna give us some good stuff tonight. Good luck. Hey, you have a great day. Working all three races, so all three uh, series getting a little bit of pudding this weekend here. <laughs> now, we can buy a guidebook in Southern California that'll tell you where the best restaurants are, but Andy, why don't you tell us where the best pit stalls are here at the racetrack? Well, there's some great pit stalls on this pit road. I, I like these two right here at this opening because it lets you get in and off your uh, out of your pit stall with, uh, with a little more room. There's also a couple more pit stalls on down towards the other end of pit road that have the same kind of real estate. You can get in and out pretty good. But the best pit stall on this pit road is down at the very end. It's the number one pit stall. And this is the one that Carl Edwards picked, our pole sitter. He picked this pit because he can get his work done and pull straight out on the racetrack with nobody, not having to worry about any traffic. And he can hopefully get in in the, lead, in the lead and off pit road in the lead. And if he's not in the lead, he can make up probably one or two spots by having this pit stall. What do they say in real estate? Location, location, location. Well, this weekend here in L.A., we've talked about how much everyone's going to enjoy the Academy Awards ceremony. So why not some best in category predictions from our stars in the pits? Here's Shannon Spade. Thanks, Doc. We're going to start tonight's prediction with the driver who deserves the award for the best performer here at Auto Club Speedway. I'm talking about driver owner Kevin Harvick and our in-race reporter. In 12 races here, he has an average finish of sixth, which is the best of all active drivers. Now, he's never won at this track, but his consistency is certainly impressive. Vince? Well, my category is the breakthrough performer, and I think that honor is going to go to Brad Keselowski in the 88 today. In five previous Nationwide Series races, he's yet to crack the top 30. Keselowski came here with a purpose this weekend and says this is by far the fastest car he's ever had at Fontana. And after finishing 22nd at Daytona last week, he needs a breakthrough performance here tonight. Jamie Little? 
Well, Vince, I'll tell you what, one driver to watch for for best performance, perhaps Greg Biffle. He's won here three times, but the catch is it's been three years since he won a nationwide race, and it happened right here back in 2006. He says he has a car to win, perhaps in racing style. Oscar is in his sights. Let's go to Dave Burns. Best picture, Jamie. How about the clear view the fans are going to get of the championship from here on out? The two guys on the front row today, they are the only two Sprint Cup regulars competing the whole season in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. The championship leader, Tony Stewart, isn't even in this race. This is what the championship will look like from here on out. Doc? Thanks, guys. We may be an hour east of Hollywood, but we certainly have seen some memorable performances here over the years. Who will it be tonight? The veterans up front, Edwards and Bush. How about a talented newcomer qualifying third, Michael McDowell, making only his seventh ever start in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Should be a fun one to watch. Glad to have you with us at the cars. Come on a turn four and head down to the green flag here on a club speedway of Southern California. Down the back straight away, Kyle Busch not wasting any time. Remember, he's already been on this track where today where he led 95 laps to win the NASCAR Truck Series event. Yeah, the start of this race and the restarts when these cars are bunched up gives the best opportunity for really drafting purposes. You get these guys make big holes in the air. Someone from behind can really get a nice run down these straightaways. That's when we'll see them get two, three, and sometimes four wide. Looks like Kyle Busch like that view out front. And that truck race, he's got it again right here. Carl Edwards doesn't need to let him get too far away here in the early laps. I don't know that Carl's going to have much say about it. Kyle has been strong. You know, he led a lot of laps here last year, and uh, he just has a really good feel for this racetrack in whatever he gets in. One driver who knows he can't let either one of these guys get away is the guys, these guys back in the pack here, the veterans like uh, Biffle in the 16 and Kevin Harvick trying to move down the inside of Biffle for position. That would be the sixth spot. And that bottom lane is going to be the preferred line around here most of the time. But it hasn't been so far. I mean, we saw Kyle Busch take the lead from the outside. And we look at Greg Biffle right here on the outside of Kevin Harvick. Looks like the outside lane is working real well early. But it helps you keep a little momentum through the corner. You don't have to slow the car down as much, put as much wheel into it. So if you can keep that momentum and keep your car rolling, then you can make that work. But it is a longer way around. Drivers over the years have said the good part about this racetrack is there's so many different lanes to choose from. The bad news is? <laughs> yeah, there's no grip in any of them is the bad news. <laughs> there goes Harvick down on the inside. That 20 car is Joey Logano. You see Kevin Harvick working all, all the way below the white line and on the apron. And that's where a lot of guys will try to search for grip. Yeah, and we talk about no grip, and that's not a, a negative towards the racetrack or anything. I'll assure you, these drivers would much rather have a racetrack like this than something that's just been repaved to where they all have to run the same line and run the same speed. He started 180 miles an hour in an entering corner plus. I was talking to Kevin yesterday a little bit about how they changed these tapered spacers, how they it's changed the driving of these cars here at this racetrack. And he was saying it just makes you drive it so much further into the corner with the tires fresh and the air pressure down. He said you can drive it so much further in the corner. He said you're barely lifting out of the throttle. You see there he's working the apron underneath Joey Logano. Making this car work real well on the bottom of the racetrack. Logano had gone by Harvick for position for sixth spot, and now Harvick trying to take it back. In front of them is Biffle in the fifth position. We heard Greg Biffle talking about how this track is different from on each end, and I have to assume that as a driver, that's because it's so tight coming off turn two, and the turn four opens up quite a bit. Yeah, you're exactly right, Andy. It does. It flattens out so quickly coming off turn two. Your car literally will move a, a lane or, or, or even more possibly coming off there because it flattens out. You lose the banking there. And then the entrance to turn three is a lot different. You seem to you tend to get a lot looser on the entry to turn three, and then you have a lot more room coming out of four. Yeah, we see Kevin Harvick's car working real well in three and four, not quite so good in one and two, and now we're seeing that kind of play out, how these two ends are different. Yeah, and you'll see him utilize that apron that Kevin's down on a lot with his left side tires there, down in three and four. That allows him to get back to the gas and then have the whole racetrack coming out of turn four. You can't really do that as much in one and two. 
David Reagan in the six car trying to move in and on the bottom of the racetrack. You see the 20 car beginning to move up, particularly in the middle of the corner. He loses the nose of the car, being opening up the door for the pass. This time it's uh, Reagan who will slide back behind him. This last lap by Carl Edwards was actually quicker than Kyle Busch. You see, like, it looks like he's going to close this gap a little bit on this lap also. When the NASCAR Nationwide Series cars were here last August, Kyle Busch sat on the pole and led 144 laps. Out of 150, dominating, becoming the first driver ever to win a NASCAR Nationwide Series race from the pole. He's pretty good here. Yeah, I'd say so. He's proven it so far this weekend, too. 29 car is Jeff Burton in third spot. Mike Bliss back and forth. See here, a couple of cars making moves on the inside. There is Stephen Wallace. And behind him at 12, the rookie, Justin Allgaier. Yeah, Justin Allgaier coming up through there pretty well. See Michael Waltrip in the 99. He's utilizing that high line. He likes to get up there and let his car roll and get a big run off the corner. See Stephen Wallace right in front of him. Stevens actually passed his teammate, Brendan Gaughan, who'd started in the 11th spot. Both Stephen Wallace and Brendan Gaughan were in the top 10 in the uh, final practice session, which took place uh, last night about this time. Brendan Gaughan moving up high. That car right on the bottom of the racetrack is David Rudeman in one of the Braun Toyotas. And back up front, it is a Toyota they are chasing. Kyle Busch in the 18 car doing triple duty this weekend. Has already won the truck race. Trying to now to win the NASCAR Nationwide Series event tonight and the Cup Series event here on Sunday. Back in just a moment. Working lap 12 of the NASCAR Nationwide Series at California, presented by GoDaddy.com and the aerial coverage, courtesy of our good friends at Goodyear. For track-tested technology, get there on Goodyear Innovation. Kyle Busch, uh, we talked about his domination in the NASCAR Nationwide Series race a year ago. Of course, he led 95 laps earlier today to win the NASCAR Truck Series. And there are his numbers here. How impressive is that? 587 laps led. 19 trips here to this racetrack. Let's uh, check in his pits with James. Doc, and eight of those wins came in this very car, the 18, and his crew chief was Jason Ratcliffe. Now, we talked about the 18 and the 20 crew chiefs being back at top of the pit box. Jason Ratcliffe, you see him on the left side, but the man sitting next to him is Joel Weidman. He's the man that took Kyle, of course, to victory lane five times while Jason was on suspension, but he's back, and he told me he and Kyle are focused on winning this championship. He said it's the first time and the best opportunity they have to win that championship. So they're back together again once again, and right now, guys, Kyle says the car doesn't have the grip he's looking for, but it's pretty good. A lot of depth on that team there with Jason and Joel. Here is the 66 car now moving in, and that was a battle for 11th spot, and Stephen Wallace takes it away. Yeah, he's going the right way, but Michael McDowell is going the wrong way. He's been slipping back from the start. He qualified third, and, uh, you know, sometimes you can have a good qualifying race car, and that really can bite you when this race starts. Yeah, and sometimes, especially young guys, they, they tend to get that car a little bit too tight, which feels good to them qualifying, and will lay down a fast lap. But you get into the race, and that car starts sliding the nose, then you lose a lot of speed through the center, and then that kills your straightaway speed. Not saying that's what Michael's done here, but you can really see him falling back. You see that 10 car, David Rudeman, he's moving up. He's our biggest mover so far, still making up spots. He's moved up 11 spots since the start. There's Justin Allgaier in the 12 car behind the, the 47 of McDowell. Allgaier driving for Roger Penske. He was the highest uh, qualifying dodge here in this one tonight. A nice run for him so far. Doing a really good job. Watched him a few laps here. Looks like he's got his car handling really good on the bottom. Gets off the corner really well. 
99 easing into your picture there. That is uh, Michael Waltrip, a brand new race car for Jerry Baxter and the boys for Michael, who said uh, apparently he was very pleased with the handling of this car in practice. It looks pretty good right now, too. I, I'm like you, Dale. I think for him to really be good, he's going to have to be working the top of the racetrack, and now we see him working on the bottom. But uh, as this race progresses, that upper groove should come in a little better. Yeah, I'm, I know most of the, a lot of these guys are hoping that it's going to anyway because it allows you to get up there, gives you more room, gives you a pass opportunities so they're hoping some rubber gets down up there and a little more grip for them. Kevin Harvick down on the inside of the one car Mike Bliss. And Mike Bliss with another good qualifying effort this week and running well. Uh, he had a good run going last week. A few things went wrong there as he got caught up uh, in a few things but uh, another good solid run as Kevin Harvick's trying to work that inside and take over the fifth spot. Update Mike Bliss. Shannon. Mike Bliss has really been battling loose conditions in this race car and qualifying, looking to hoping that it will tighten up as the race goes on today. But guys, this is his favorite chassis, according to Mike Bliss. He told me that this week. He said he ran, ran it to the ground last year. He finished fifth with it at Michigan, of course, the sister track to Fontana Dock. You know, when you have a race car you really like, these, you know, for a driver, I, I always like as a crew chief to give it to him. It gives him confidence. He gets down in the seat of that thing, and he just feels like that is the best car for him. And I, I, I've always been a proponent of just, if that's what he wants, keep bringing it to the track, even if you think you have a better car. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you guys always think that a lot. That they, Hey, we got a better aero car and everything else, but I'm sure Rusty would say the same thing. Man, give me that car that feels good. We see Michael Walker taking the spot away here. But uh, that, that's what you want as a driver, a car that you have confidence in, that you know when you get there, it's going to give you that good feel. Now, I tell you what, DJ, well said, man. There's no doubt about that. When a driver jumps in a car, it feels good to him. The seat fits good. That's a car he likes. That just means a whole lot. I tell you guys, one thing I'm watching here, though, in this race, kind of un 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 connected a little bit, is, boy, that top groove looks like it's really starting to come in. And these cars don't have a lot of horsepower compared to the, nation the cup cars. It looks to me like turn two, and those babies are flying off the top side of that racetrack right now. Yeah, that, that does look like where the momentum is. For the guys that are running the top groove, it looks like coming off turn two and down the back stretch is where they make the most time using that momentum. As Rusty was mentioning, the 29 car of Jeff Burton is losing some grip. Now, he has lost three positions in the last lap and a half. Now, back to six spot. Jason Leffler on the left side of your screen, uh, sort of in the center of a lot of controversy last week at Daytona. Uh, he is now moving up here. That car, Leffler up to 16th spot. McDowell has moved back from third now to 17th position. And Scott Legacy Jr. there uh, in the mix. Uh, he's in the, the red car trying to make a pass on Michael McDowell. And he was caught up in that Jason Leffler uh, and Stephen Wallace deal last weekend. Uh, had a good run going the whole day at, at uh, Daytona, but uh, making progress here too. And behind them, the 27 car of Jason Keller had a great top 10 finish last week. Now, again, Jeff Burton is sliding backwards in the field and now will lose that sixth position. Now, Vince, what's going on with the 29 car? Well, Jeff Burton is losing positions as he is dropping toward the back. Obviously got a long way to go because he started up front, but he says this car is very, very loose. Calm on the radio with Shane Wilson, who's subbing as crew chief this weekend for Darren Deringhoff, who had a baby uh, earlier in the week. But Burton says this car is way too loose. Shane Wilson assured him, don't worry, we've got plenty of time. We'll snug it up at our stop. Well, we heard Jeff Burton say in the countdown show that they found that their car got looser as the track cooled down, and, and uh, that's going to be even worse. So they're going to have to make a pretty big swing at this thing, Andy. Yeah, it used to be that the tracks would cool down and the cars would get tighter. And a lot of guys are having a hard time adjusting to whether it's this new tire or what it, what's causing this. But most of the time now, you hear as the tracks cool off, the cars get looser. So they're going to have to work on this car. I don't think it's going to tighten up by itself. They're going to have to make some adjustments. Jeff Burton has been very good here over the years and has, in fact, won here back in the fall of 2007. See Brendan gone, continuing to move up toward the front. And, folks, we are 21 laps in, so we're about halfway to a first pit stop if we stay green at All Club Speedway of Southern California. Kyle Busch has led all 22 laps thus far. 
next week we head to the show capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Folks, last year over 120,000 fans were on hand to watch the NASCAR Nationwide Series race, and they didn't go home disappointed. What a great move by Mark Martin to win it. First ever win for Junior Motorsports in the year before. How about that great battle between uh, Jeff Burton and Kyle Busch? Folks, that's next week coming your way, 4 o'clock Eastern time on Saturday on ESPN2. Kyle Busch is our leader, and he has led all 26 laps thus far. And while you watch him lead, let's visit with a, a special guest down in the garage area, Jamie. Certainly a familiar face, of course, singer, actor, my, Lee Cyrus's dad, Billy Ray Cyrus, of course, you're the Grand Marshal. What was it like for you saying those famous words in racing? Well, it was just great to be here, to get back to my Tennessee roots, hence the title of the new album, Back to Tennessee. The single Back to Tennessee is doing great on radio. And getting out here and being part of NASCAR really makes me feel like I'm at home. This was a great way to, to, to start this weekend and to be a part of this race. Great to see Billy Ray Cyrus. Of course, he's watching his boy Kyle Busch right now as he leads this race. Doc. Thank you, Jamie. Accomplished uh, singer, songwriter, actor, and now everybody knows him as uh, Miley's dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I saw him earlier down in Kyle Busch's pit for the truck race. I'm sure that's probably where he's headed again if he's wanting to go to victory lane again, the way it's looking right now. Kyle Busch is uh, put, uh, he's over five seconds out front right now. Just lap after lap, he's clipping off, beating these guys about two tenths. One car that's been making a move since they waved the green flag, and no surprise whatsoever, David Rudiman in the 10 car. And he has gained a total of 17 positions since that's a, the uh, start of this race, making his way toward the front. It's going to probably need a little help from the pit stop to get him up there to be able to have a shot at running down. Uh, there is uh, the biggest movers, Michael Lynette, by the way, in a backup car after having an accident during qualifying. And there you see Rudiman in the 10 car moving up uh, toward the top 15. Dave. And Doc, actually, he is 12th right now, chasing down the 12th car in front of him of Allgaier. And his car has been great since the start of the race, but just a little bit on the tight side, telling crew chief Todd Losey that he needs a big adjustment on that first round of pit stops. They're going to remove a spring rubber from the left rear spring of that car. And Tim Brewer in the Craftsman Tech Garage, I know you've told me a hundred times, but how do they do that? And where's that located? Dave, it's pretty simple. You reach down here, folks, you actually pull the spring rubber out. But what a lot of the teams are doing, they actually have the spring rubber hanging. So if they've got the thing in there, they can pull the thing out, leave it back in this area right here, where if they need it again, they can reinstall it. But when you're in a deal where the nose is pushing, you're going to take that rubber out, and it's going to take weight off that left rear tire, enable the car to turn from the center of the corner off. Just a half a rubber doesn't take much, as Tim was showing, uh, and it can make a big difference for a driver. Yeah, and you would think, wow, that, how much difference is that going to make? But it does make a huge difference. Instead of having to worry about uh, adjusting the wedge, which is hard to do on these cars now when they're running these coal binding uh, setups, Andy. It is, and, and you know, you're talking about fine adjustments, and you're trying to find just a little bit of balance. It's all about balance, keeping the car where you don't have one end or the other sliding around. And uh, sometimes it's hard to find, but that spring rubber is a great way to tune that chassis. And we're about 10 or 12 laps away from pit stops and now the 29 car beginning to make his way back toward the front. He had dropped back a couple more spots and now retakes the sixth position from Mike Bliss. We talked about we heard him talk about Jeff Burton's car being loose now and he talked about it getting looser whenever the sun went down. But what generally happens here in a run is your car generally does tighten up because you, you, that fuel load goes off. And so the car starts sliding the nose just a little bit. So it might be coming back to him now. Vince, what's going on there? That's exactly right, Dale. They just came on the radio and they were talking about the fact that the leaders are backing up to them and the fact that Jeff Burton's car is getting better in the long run. Shane Wilson said, that's good. We'll make sure it's better at the front of the run and we'll be all set to go. So so far, it's getting better for Jeff Burton after a very loose start. Thanks, Vince. Here's a couple of guys that uh, were very familiar with each other at Daytona. These two, uh, the contact triggered the major multi-car accident. Jason Leffler on the inside of Stephen Wallace as these two guys are running uh, for 14th and 15th position. 
isn't, isn't this always the way it works? The guys that get together the week before always seem to find each other the next race. Every time I ever had a problem with anybody, whether it's my fault or the other guy's fault, <laughs> we always qualified beside each other. We'd have to be in the truck riding around the pace lap or, or the pre-race deal before the race. And so if you hadn't aired it out before, that gave you a perfect chance. But uh, these guys are smart. Uh, they gave each other a little bit of room, and they forgot about last week. That was a nice, clean pass. Guys, keep it clean because we're going to go to commercial, or at least until we come back. <laughs> we're about 10 laps away from pit stops as the sun's going down and the track is changing who's going to change what tires and what on the car when we come back the nascar nationwide series in california coverage presented by godaddy.com we are just past the 70 mile mark of the 300 in tonight's race and there's the man who's led them all so far kyle bush out in front in that gibbs racing 18 toyota by some seven seconds over second place carl edwards they're coming up on the first set of pit stops and as we check out our race recap with kyle he doesn't really have a whole lot he needs done to this race car there bud what you got If you want to play with it, <laughs> Rusty and Brad. I tell you, he is <laughs> awful close. There's no doubt about that. I wouldn't play a whole lot. Although, we got to remember one thing now. It's track's getting cooler. The track is going to change. So, I mean, these guys are pretty smart. They're probably going to try to stay up with the racetrack to keep the car going quick. All I'm going to say is thank goodness we have a pit stop coming up because he is gone. Maybe we'll oh, tighten up the field just a little bit. Carl Edwards has to get up on the wheel, and he usually does. After the first round of pit stops, they'll make their second adjustments as we go into dark or get it gets a little cooler. And I think Carl may be able to run him down, but he's flying. Well, what's that like to be in that 60 car and watch that 18 sailing away? Well, right now, it means you're second best. That's about it. I mean, <laughs> he's sitting back. He's probably thinking what he wants to make on a pit stop, the next stop, what kind of changes. And in my mind, this is a fairly short race. These guys need to take a big swing at it and make a bigger change in order to get up in the game. Well, they're going to have a chance to take Take a swing at it about another lap and a half. That's what we're hearing from Pit Road before Kyle Bush brings that 18 car down the pit lane. So, Doc, uh, we'll set it back up to you with uh, an eight second lead between first and second. Wow. Wow. He has opened up. What do I say? He's opened up on the field. <laughs> Some kind of can or something. Yeah, he's opened up a can. Here comes Kevin Harvick, by the way, just taking a third spot away a moment ago from Greg Biffle. Harvick, we mentioned uh, from nearby Bakersfield has never won at uh, the home racetrack coming down at 55 miles an hour for her first, first stop of the day headed to you shannon doc california native kevin harvick pulls his car into his pit stall he says he's really strong off the corners he's just a little bit loose on the track they're going to make an air pressure adjustment on this 33 car you see those guys working on the right side right now kevin harvick's guys doing a great job for him they move around to the left side kevin harvick looking for that first win in that 33 car hoping to get it here tonight You see him on the left side in the 18. So what kind of playing are they going to do? They decided to go a half round down on the track bar. Right front air pressure adjustment. And that will be it. He said the car is pretty decent, so he doesn't want to mess with it too much. That's Kyle Busch, guys. It'd be, be hard for me to adjust on that race car. <laughs> They're just going to put tires on it right now. Looking at the 29 of Jeff Burton. Remember, his car was real good at the end of the run. They made a wedge adjustment and also an air tire pressure adjustment to snug it up in the first half of the run in a way clean. And nearly contact there in the Leffler coming into pit road, trying to get service on his Toyota. No question here, Andy, uh, with this racetrack and the grip levels you got, you got to put four tires every chance you get. Well, especially under green here too, Doc, because they, they have to put a full load of fuel and that takes just about the amount of time that it takes to put four tires on. That would not be the time for two tires. Here comes Carl Edwards to you, Shannon. Andy, tight is the condition that Carl Edwards has been fighting all weekend with his 60 car. He's still fighting it on the track here today. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. Carl Edwards, of course, going for the championship. As you see that uh, wedge, it looks like in that back of the car for Carl Edwards to try to loosen him up a little bit on the racetrack. These guys would have really liked to have had a caution. And there's Michael Waltrip sitting backwards in his pit. Facing in the wrong direction. The car's looped around, and uh, they're going to have to uh, adjust. Uh, you can service the car like this. As long yes. as he's in the box, he's he can there. do that. I'm in the box. Pit it. Michael's telling them, pit it. He's in the box. 
Well, I'd say excuse me for being a little shocked with the way you parked it in here. <laughs> yeah, they don't give style points, but uh, you're in here, so go ahead and put four tires on it. Well, it just throws everybody's rhythm off oh, everything. Yeah. I mean, oh, you're thinking is, you know, well, he's going to have to turn around before we do this. Before he takes off. Go, 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 go. Uh, that was simple enough. Yeah, there we go. See Brad Keselowski on the right side of your screen there getting his service. Let's see if we can show you what happened with uh, Michael Waltrip coming down pit road and how that uh, backwards sequence began. So he got a little congestion here. Oh, he got clipped. Oh, yeah. Oh, he, got hit, he got hit hard right there. Brandon Witt, the 61 car. Yeah, and Brandon Witt's got a lot of damage on the right front as well. Nice job getting it in the box, though. Well, I, yeah. get I mean, that. the thing is, is pit crew's just shocked. They don't know what to do. Yeah. They don't know whether they should go over, wh whether he should turn around. Uh, Everything is backwards. <laughs> what yeah. do you do? It's unfortunate. Michael was having a good run there. It's going to cost him a lot of time. And I was getting ready to say that these guys really would have loved to have had a caution before this point in time so they could really work on these cars. Uh, you see some the damage uh, from that contact there. They would really like to have made, if they wanted to put a spring rubber in or take one out, it's hard to do that. It, you can take it out on a green flag stop, but you really can't put one in, Andy. Well, a second on, on a green flag stop costs you a lot of distance, a lot of real estate. When you're under caution, you can just close right back up. You might lose a spot or two, but you're not going to lose, you know, a half a straightaway by yeah. making a change yeah. like that. This guy's covering a lot of distance in a hurry, Kyle Busch. First sequence of pit stops are complete, and Kyle Busch, by the way, has led 41 of 44 laps. Brad Keselowski led two laps during pit stops, and Carl Edwards led a lap while Kyle Busch was on pit road. Back with more from Fontana in just a moment. Here we go. Well, we continue under green from California. Kyle Busch, the leader. We remind you of the other motorsports action coming up throughout the weekend here on ESPN2. NHRA Arizona Nationals qualifying tonight. Finals tomorrow night. Our NASCAR Now Sunday morning pre-race show tomorrow from here in California. And then our Monday roundtable uh, wrapping up all the weekend's action. And then it's off to Las Vegas for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. That's next Saturday at 4 Eastern time. That's what's coming up on the ESPN Family of Networks Racing Wise. Kyle Busch has opened up a 10 second lead on second place. Time for our nationwide up to speed. And Jamie, not all of that was actually on the racetrack. No, it wasn't. They were pretty quick in the pits as well. And of course, he got on the radio and talked to the team and wanted to know how good he's doing. What's the lead now, Jason? 11 and a half. Wow. Yeah, we're clicking him off, dude. No need to do too much. Yeah, we picked up about four and a half there on pit road. Good job, guys. Just a reminder, this is the same car that he dominated last time they were here, led 144 of 155 laps, one from the pole, and so far it's the same deal all over, Shannon. Jamie, we've already spoken about how consistent Kevin Harvick here is, is here on this track. In qualifying, he said that the car was way, 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 that's a lot of ways, way too loose. Now they've tried to work on it here in the race because the loose condition is still consistent. They took some air pressure out of the car for Kevin Harvick. So far, so good. Jamie? And behind him right now, Greg Biffle, three years, 75 races to be exact since he went to Victor Lane in the Nationwide Series. Eddie Pardue, his crew chief, said, I think we're due. And Greg Biffle, of course, happy with the car, made a wedge adjustment on that last stop. Shannon? Kevin Hart, I mean, I'm sorry, Carl Edwards is pretty happy with the car. He said he just needs to be a little freer. It's the tight conditions that they're battling out there. They did make an air pressure adjustment and a wedge adjustment on that last pit stop. Dan Stillman looking on second race as crew chief for Carl Edwards doing a pretty good job. Jamie? He started 12th, his fifth right now. They feel they're due as well. This guy's gone through it. Of course, he got the pole yesterday in the Cup Series, and he traded, traded out the motor and went to the back. So he's looking for a victory, and there's a caution on the track. Turn two, guys. Got a big fire on the back stretch off turn two. It's Michael McDowell. Heavy contact for McDowell, and he's trying to get the car down to the inside. Lots of flames inside the car. He needs to get that car to a stop and get out of it because that. See the fire truck coming as quickly as he can get there to get the car pulled over and get out, Michael. He's broken an oil line or a fuel line. Completely exploded. Good to see Michael jump right out of there. Yeah, Michael's a pretty Burn good sized guy, so sometimes it's a little now. more difficult to get out of there, but he did a nice job. Hate to see it after a great qualifying effort. 
Top finishing rookie last week at Daytona, 14th place finish, only his seventh ever start in the series, and uh, he said it just uh, blew up in a, in a big way. Yeah, it sounded like he might have been talking about a tire, possibly. He said it exploded. So we'll see here that the uh, car hit the wall. We'll see, he does hit the wall there. I don't know if it was a tire, maybe ran over something. That thing was already on fire before he hit, though. It could so have that, blown that, up. Yeah. Could, the engine could have blown up, and then he got in the, oil, out got the bottom. Yeah. That is a lot of fire. Yeah, that oil makes an intense fire when you put a lot of air on it, like you see here, with about still going about 50 or 60 miles an hour. Yeah, terrible feeling as a driver to be sitting in there. You're wanting to stop. You're trying to find a fire truck and make sure that you, since he can, drive it and get there. Uh, but you just want to get out of there as quickly as you possibly can. You see, Michael did a great job of getting out of there and getting too close uh, to the fire truck so the fireman could get that put out. There were only 14 cars on the lead lap, and now there'll be 15. Stephen Wallace uh, is the Aaron's lucky dog, free pass winner. So uh, he was the first car lap down, and he'll be able to go back around the pace car and get back on the lead lap. And uh, he'll be right behind uh, his teammate, Brendan Gaughan, in 14th position. So uh, the Rusty Wallace car is 14th and 15th here after the uh, first caution flag of the night. Kyle Bush, we just joined our coverage. Kyle. Started on the outside front row, but uh, led the first 40 consecutive laps prior to his pit stop. He has now led 49 of the 52 laps tonight. And here they come down pit road. Let's go down to uh, Dave Burns. David Rudman running 12. They will put four tires on the 10 car. They will make a chassis adjustment as well for David Rudman. The car was fairly decent that time, but they needed an adjustment again, Vince. Well, the 29 of Jeff Burton there in the middle of your screen. They're going to make a tire pressure adjustment in the left front, going down a half a pound. It's been a good stop the first time around for Burton. He likes his car. Jamie Little. Kyle Busch, lower left set. You know, it's a little tight, but when I put extra wheel in it, it responds. So let's just leave it as is, boys. Putting on four sticker tires for the 18 car. Guys. Jamie, Kevin Harvick says the car is still a little bit loose. They're going to take two tenths of air out of the right rear as those guys are working on the left side, looking for a solid pit stop here for the 33 car, a little bit slow. And the number one car, the 18, with the battle up pit road. There's the stampede off pit road. Kyle Busch continues to be our leader. Mike Bliss, a little bit of strategy. Gains seven positions. Carl Edwards up a spot. Kevin Harvick, an adjustment. He will lose three. Back to the green flag in just a moment. Typical night in Southern California for NASCAR stock cars. Close calls on pit road, a little contact, and how about some hot cars on the racetrack? Some hotter than others, and Michael McDowell erupting an engine in his Toyota, and he climbs out okay. NASCAR Nationwide Series action, the Stater Brothers 300. We are at lap 55 of 150, working caution for the first time tonight. And I've seen engines blow, but it looked like that one just uh, exploded, like it was almost on fire, as DJ said, before it ever hit the wall. I haven't seen one blow up like that in quite a, quite a long time. You know, usually these cars stay fairly contained, or the engines do when they blow up. But, uh, man, that one did. That one just erupted. Well, you saw the fire erupt on the 47 car, and let's explain uh, how that happens and what all's involved as we go down to our ESPN Craftsman Tech Garage and Tim Brewer. Thanks, Doc. Folks, the connecting rods and the pistons, they go in the engine looking like this, but when they come through the side of the oil pan, they have a tendency to look like this. And what happens, they actually come out here and cut the oil lines in two. When they cut the oil lines, you got these headers right here. They're about 1,400 degrees, red hot. And that's what ignited all that oil. And that's the reason you, when you see the rods coming out looking like that, DJ is going to be a big eruption of fire. Now, Tim, you could actually see some of the parts and pieces flying out of that car after it blew up. You still see them right here in, the, in our shot. A lot of pieces of that motor coming apart. DJ, how does he see anything inside that car? Uh, it's really hard. You basically don't. You, you're going by memory more than anything right there, and you're just turning it left and hoping that everybody behind you is going to dodge you. And, uh, again, you're just trying to get this thing out of the way and slow down where you can get out as quickly as possible. Good news is Michael McDowell able to climb out okay. In fact, he, uh, yeah, even though he's a rookie driver, he was putting the window net down and unhooking before the car was even stopped because of the fire. And uh, kudos to the safety crews for NASCAR. They were on their way to that car before it ever got stopped and were able to help the driver and put the fire out. Back in a moment. 
gorgeous night here for racing for the NASCAR Nationwide Series action at California presented by GoDaddy.com. We are working caution number one on the night. Lap 51, the incident with the 47 car, Michael McDowell, and uh, some near misses on pit road a moment ago. Kevin Harvey coming in and uh, trying to get service on his Chevrolet. Now watch him, him pull in and watch uh, the 60 car of Carl Edwards. See, the pit crew here has to do a little dance to get around the car, and that can cost you a little time and also your rhythm. You get off just a little bit right there, and it can hurt the rest of the pit stop. See right here that you need to get in that pit stall as quick as possible, and Carl's trying just to get into his stall. Everybody's okay, but it does cost him a little bit of time. Let's talk to uh, Kevin Harvick being shown right now back in the fifth position. Kevin, Dale Jeff, the SPN, you got me? Four, Dale. Hey, man, the good news is looks like your race car is really fast on the racetrack. Uh, you made any adjustments, or is it just that good? Uh, Reeb Chevrolet has been really good. Uh, it's been a, a little bit loose, but we've made uh, about a half a pound of air pressure adjustments since we started the race. So just got to make it happen on pit road so we can have a chance at the 18, or we'll never get to find out how fast it is. I hear you on that. Hey, Kev, we've heard some other drivers talk about in anticipating the track cooling off and as we get dark here, that their cars have loosened up. Have you seen any of that, or are you anticipating that the track's going to tighten up some? We've gotten a little bit better as the night has gone on, so hopefully it keeps going that way. Um, obviously, you know, it could swing either way here now that it's all the way dark, but uh, the last run on the car was a little bit better than it was the first run. All right, man, thanks. Go up there and get that 18. Make a good race for us here. Hey, Ernie Cope, Andy Petrie, have you got us? I got you. Hey, Ernie, we saw Mike Bliss just take two tires there on that last pit stop, and he's lined up in front of you. How do you think that's going to work here at this point of the race? I'm not sure. We're going to have to wait and see. We just uh, felt we got a good race car, and we didn't want to take a chance with two. We just want to keep our balance and put on four. Okay, Ernie, you guys have good luck, and we'll watch how this works out for the one car for maybe later. Good luck. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Couple laps to green flag racing back here at uh, Auto Club Speedway of Southern California. Kyle Busch and with Bliss Edwards, Biffle. Got to watch Harvick and Burton on the restart here. We'll come back and wave the green in just a moment. Welcome back to California Auto Club Speedway. Joined now by Kyle Busch's crew chief. Six months since you've been back here, Jason Radcliffe. So, Jason, you're looking at the board here. You have Harvick, Biffle. You guys have enough to hold them off to the end? I think so. I've been keeping an eye on them. They're pretty quick. Uh, Kyle's pretty happy with the car. We've been just looking for uh, looking for some grip, you know. Uh, so we did a little air pressure adjustment on that last run. Hopefully that'll pay off. But yeah, there, there's quite a few good cars here. It's going to be tough, but uh, our Z-Line Toyota's been good all night, and hopefully we can keep it up front. Well, Doc, he's going for his second win in one day. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, let's listen in to the spotters as Kyle Busch brings him down, and we go full throttle. Stay ready. Green flag, green flag, green flag. Clear. He's stuck. Inside's covered. One back to the 16 yearly. Still clear low. Outside. Out of here. Outside. Just shoot him. Clear by half. Bush pulling away. There's the interval in a single lap over Carl Edwards, although Carl is digging, and here comes the 16 behind him, Greg Biffle. See all the dust from the uh, cleanup from the blown engine of Michael McDowell. I think a couple laps to blow that off, but Kyle Bush did just just jolt right out there and get a big lead right off the bat. And he's able just to go on the start. That's what these other guys are having a difficult time. They're having to give up something on the front end to make sure their car's good on the back end. And Kyle Busch just driving away from them. We've got a lot of racing going on back behind these guys. Michael Waltrip and some guys trying to, to uh, get themselves in the position for the lucky dog. We see Jeff Burton here. And Kevin Harvick battling for that uh, fourth spot. 
Mike Bliss there in the one just behind them. He took on the two tires. We'll just, just have to see how that plays out. I don't think it's going to work too good for Mike Bliss, but just behind him is Brian Vickers, and he had one of the best cars on the racetrack for a lot of the run, that last run. You see right here, he's looking inside of Mike Bliss. So the six car, David Reagan, right behind this battle. Yeah, this is six, seventh, and eighth on the screen. Reagan pulling in there. Toyota for Vickers, Chevy for Bliss, and Ford for Reagan. Behind him is Brad Keselowski. There he is in the GoDaddy.com Chevy, the 88 car. We talked about Brad not having much luck uh, at this racetrack over the years. Whoa, Mike Bliss really had to get out of yeah, it right there. Something's wrong with Mike yeah, Bliss. He got out of the He got a left rear tire down. He only Still took, coming. He only took uh, right side tire. Well, that's a chance that you take, and you had to drive through all of that stuff. We that's, saw those parts and pieces come out, Andy. That's the biggest thing about changing two tires in that situation because that engine blew up there, and it was a lot of parts and pieces out there. And now he's got a left rear flat. Left side tires. Left side tires. Flat tire. This team, Mike Bliss, running for the championship this year, so uh, it cost it. I guess he rolled the dice and it bit him. Yeah, it did. It's just... Uh, it's one of those things, you know, I've learned over the years that you really need to get four tires after you have something like that, a big crash with a lot of debris, a blown engine that throws stuff everywhere like we saw coming out right there. Tire lets go on Mike Bliss. Lucky to keep the car out of the wall, actually. Well, exactly right. Well, let's go on board with this car and uh, listen in. Lonely feeling up there when the cars are just sailing by and not much you can do, and you can't run it hard because you don't want to tear a fender off. Yeah, and that, that, he he was very lucky, as Andy said. He, that was the fastest part of the racetrack where that happened, going down into turn one. Mike did a nice job. As you said, he's trying to get back to pit road as fast as he can, but you just can't drive it very fast. It's either going to throw the rubber off there and tear up your car, or you're going to spin out. So you really just have to be patient and get there and try to uh, hope things go better for the rest of the race. 10 car there, that is the uh, efforts of David Rudeman. Behind him is Leffler, and they are battling for 10th position. These are two of the Braun Racing cars, teammates. Check in on the 10 car, Dave. And guys, what they wanted to do on that pit stop was get the back end of that car up in the air just a little bit more. Their last pit stop, they were able to correct the tight in the middle of the corner, but it made the car too loose going into the corner. And so David couldn't arc it in the way he had earlier in the race. They think they've achieved that. And he's picked up a couple of positions since the restart. David Rudeman will uh, drive about six races in this car. And uh, Bernie Lamar will also be driving as he will be driving also some in the 32 car, the other Braun car. So Andy, they're talking about getting the back end of that car up and in the way that you can do that, which is going to help you aerodynamically by getting it up there. But there is a, a ma maximum height that you can have, so they have to be really careful in making that kind of adjustment with those screw jacks. Yeah, they have a little leeway after the race for these adjustments. You're talking about on pit road where they, you need to be able to turn these jack screws, which will change the height of the car, and uh, NASCAR gives them just a little bit of leeway on that. The battle for seventh place here with Brad Keselowski. We were just getting ready to talk when Bliss blew his tire. That this hadn't been a great racetrack for Brad, but he's having a nice run here as he's trying to uh, get to pass David Reagan and take over that seventh spot. Yeah, we talked to Brad during our NASCAR countdown show, and uh, and he was uh, certainly lamenting about the fact that in five previous races here, his best finish is 32nd. Yeah, and I talked to Tony Uri Singer yesterday, and he said that they went a different direction than what Brad has liked here in the past in the front end. And he was talking about the springs, and we didn't, I won't get into telling what he told me because that would, you know, <laughs> give a lot of people something else. But he, they did change what, the, what they've normally run, and it's a lot better for Brad here. Vince? Well, they were really loose early on. In fact, uh, Brad Keselowski said that it was six or seven on a scale of 10 in looseness, but they've made some track bar adjustments each of the two pit stops, the last two pit stops, and the car is getting a lot better. And you see, started 13th, up to seventh, and he says the car is as good as it's been all night long. Shannon? Vince right behind the 88 in that fixed car. David Reagan really happy with this car. They did not make any changes on the last pit stop, but I'll tell you right now, he's running eighth. This is not going to be good enough for this team. Mike Kelly told me that they were not happy with the eighth place finish last week in Daytona. He said, because we are running for an owner's championship, we have to go for wins. And because of that, it has forced them to rethink the way they approach the race. He 
says we are willing to take gambles for this six car to get to victory lane. Doc? David Reagan right, having an awfully good run. And uh, we, as you see this six car, we mentioned at, at, at Daytona that uh, David was only going to run 20 races. He will actually share this car with Eric Darnell. And we want to pass along our sympathies to the Darnell family. Eric lost his mom early in the week, and uh, they are back in Illinois for services. I understand Jack Roush will be sending a plane up on Monday for a lot of the crew guys that want to be able to go up there and pay their respects. But to our deepest sympathies to the Darnell family, Eric Darnell, who will start driving this car at Richmond in May, uh, losing his mom early in the week. Kevin Harvick in the 33 car, moving in on the 32. That is for fifth position. Ryan Vickers looking back at Harvick in the Chevy. And one of the big question marks, guys, coming into the night was how would the R07 engine perform? First time ever uh, out of the box for the R07 in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And it's been a bit of a struggle so far. You have to look back to fourth spot to find the first one in running order. Uh, I think that I don't really believe that it's the engine that shows up so much here. It's such a handling racetrack. And uh, this Joe Gibbs team has just been so well getting their car balanced and done such a good job. And uh, you see Kevin Harvick, he's got a pretty decent car too, but uh, and uh, he's got the new engine. But th these two engines, the R07 and the Toyota engine, are very similar. Yeah, not that the rest of these guys aren't really good race drivers either, but that Gibbs team also has Kyle Busch, who seems to be, you know, pretty good here also. Couple of former winners here, left side of your screen, the Biff, three-time winner, and uh, going by or trying to go by. Guy won here back in the fall of 07, Jeff Burton. Looks like Jeff Burton's got his car adjusted a little bit now. It's going the right way. Yeah, the, the first run, he, he had fallen back pretty rapidly and, and got about 10 seconds behind uh, in less laps than what we've been here so far. So it uh, uh, looks like his car is better on the, the short run or the first part of the run, which is exactly what they were trying to do. They put some wedge in the car and seemed like it's better. Now, if it just doesn't fall off, he can continue. You can see him use, utilizing the apron there down in turns three and four where he can really carry a lot of speed. You know, Jeff Burton said this week in the garage area, he said, you know, what's people asking about the impact of no testing in the offseason? He said, you know, like Major League Baseball players have spring training. Football players, you can have a scrimmage but race car drivers he said in order to be sharp you need to be in a race or in the car they said that's why he wanted to run some of these nationwide races early on because you got to be sharp and the only way you get there is by being on the track well, and every time he gets in this nationwide series car he is sharp here's just an allgaier now taking a spot from david rudiman allgaier is the rookie uh, competitor in the 12 car for penske and uh, rudiman able not to use the high line to go back by not giving it up so fast but this is for the 10th spot Justin, Justin Allgaier's done a great job. How about it, Vint? Well, that's exactly right. And Chad Walter, his crew chief, has really been helping Allgaier along. Allgaier, in fact, said Chad Walter has been the key to his success early on, uh, particularly in the comfort level. And you say, well, success. He was 32nd last week at Daytona. But remember, he got caught up in that accident and had been running pretty well uh, beforehand, as you see Rudiman giving him a little bump on the back end. But Allgaier, just his sixth nationwide start, his first race here. And he says Chad Walter has helped him get used to the experience of not only competing against these cup guys on the racetrack, but of what to expect when he comes to a new racetrack. A lot of things expected from Algaier just because he's racing for Roger Penske, and I think this young guy has not been disappointing at all here in the early going. Vince, we ask Algaier about what he has learned from the other veteran Penske drivers. Roger is very, very image conscious, and so for me that's been a big part of it. But also to, you know, each one of the drivers has given me little bits of advice as to things that I can do better, to, you know, inside the organization, or things that I can do better on the racetrack. So, you know, I've gotten, uh, gotten a lot of things that that I can take forward and use, and and hopefully be racing with them one day in the Cup Series, and and use that information maybe to to come back on them. A lot of potential for this young man. Won the ARCA title a year ago. And Roger Penske believes this young man has a lot of talent. Maybe can get to victory lane early on in his rookie season in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Just past the halfway. Back in a moment. To win in the NHRA, they max tuned to 8,000 horsepower. Sometime it's a little too much, uh, like right here. And you drive it to a stop. How about Ashley Forrest Hood, who hit the extinguishers and drove through it? NHRA qualifying from Phoenix at midnight.
And the NHRA action, just part of a busy weekend of motorsports here on ESPN2, that qualifying tonight, midnight Eastern. NASCAR now, California pre-race edition tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Then the uh, drag racing finals tomorrow night. NASCAR now, round table on Monday, 5 Eastern. And then it's off to Vegas, baby, for the NASCAR Nationwide Series <laughs> next Saturday at 4 Eastern time. All that coming up here on ESPN2. And from the pit studio, Alan Best with Rusty Wallace, Brad Darney just passed halfway. Front of the pack, Kyle Busch has opened up a three-second lead on Carl Edwards. Here's a little race for eighth spot. David Reagan in the six, Brad Keselowski in the 88. Tell you what, Kyle Busch has just been so strong tonight, it's unreal. We heard earlier on his radio, he's just out there playing with him right now. He's got such a strong car. But Carl Edwards is continually working on his chassis, trying to get better. You see Brad Keselowski right there on the outside of David Reagan. He's had a good, solid night all week, all, all day long also. And after spotting Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards points at Daytona when he had that wreck late in the race while he was running so well, Keselowski really needs to break that California jinx here tonight and have a good finish. He's having an outstanding run. This will be great for his confidence. You're absolutely right. Throw Daytona out, come here this weekend, get a good solid finish, and move on. Brad's doing a super job. Only problem is Kyle Busch has uh, punched the clock. Check that on these guys. Now, I know there's going to be someone out there shouting at their TV just a second ago that it's only the second race of the season. What are you talking about points for? <laughs> We've seen these championships lost yeah. by, you know, 10, 5, 3 points. Well, that McCarl Edwards last year. And you know what yes, I tell them? I tell them, hey, baby, that's the way we roll here in NASCAR. Yeah. I mean, you got to think right. about points right. all, the, all time. the time. Very right. important. Every race counts, that's for sure. Kyle Busch has led all but three laps of this race. Earlier today, he led 95 of 100 laps in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race here en route to a win. Now he's led all but two of the 84 laps we've run so far. Carl Edwards says, hey, I'll come up there and, and race with you for a little bit. Kyle says, I don't think so. Carl says, at least come back to him and race a little bit. If I do that, he's going to lead a lap. Aren't we battling for the championship a little bit here? Sorry, buddy. I see. Kyle Busch talking about championship and points. Yep. Of course, maybe what he doesn't know is Carl has led a lap during an exchange of pit stops already. <laughs> well, Alan, you just got to. I mean, these points championships come down to a mere small amount of points. I mean, you get 190-some points to win this thing. And, I mean, these guys have lost these points championships by 10 points or less in the past. So you got to think about it all the time. Lead the most laps. Get those bonus points. Do what you got to do. That's what he's doing right now. Uh, 2.7 seconds, that gap from Kyle Busch back to Carl Edwards. And, by the way, uh, Kyle leading at halfway. The leader at halfway has gone on to win the last four races here. Gotta like it if you're a Kyle Busch fan, not if you're a Carl Edwards. A uh, gentleman who had a tough night tonight is with Dave. And Alan, we speculated about what might have happened in the moments that led up to the wall contact for Michael McDowell. Michael, was it motor or something else? No, honestly, uh, it felt like I just spun out of my own oil there and then it sort of erupted, but the motor was still running uh, while I was on fire there, so I don't I don't think the motor blew up, but uh, you know, it's just real unfortunate for uh, everybody at JTG Doherty. And we had Pacific Packaging on the car this weekend and uh, you know, we had a great qualifying effort. We're looking for a good show and it sort of went up in flames. And you're okay? Oh, I'm doing great. You know, uh, everybody at Sparkle builds real safe suits, and they give you lots of time to get out of there. Michael's okay. He's already phoned his wife, Jamie, who is expecting their first child in less than two weeks, Doc. And we wish them well. Boy, Michael McDowell does everything in spectacular fashion. Remember the, remember the contact uh, in the COT car at Texas last year? Oh, my. Uh, how could you forget that? Yeah pretty uh, pretty big but uh, he'll be back next week at Las Vegas ready to do it again to see a great battle going on right here Justin all there in the 12 car Jason Leffler trying to take that 10th spot away from him Logano up Joey. high there's Joey the uh, the 18 year old Leffler makes the pass I'm a little surprised that this 20 car has been better tonight as we've seen this 18 car really just check out on these guys you got to think their setups are similar I would uh, I would expect this 20 car to be a little better yeah, we expect a lot out of him, yeah. you know, that, and he's yeah. a young guy that uh, doesn't have a lot of experience at these racetracks, and this is a very, very difficult racetrack, and that's why these cars get spread out so much here because of that, and if you, you know, even sometimes with experience, uh, it doesn't help, but he's got a good race car. He's doing a good job. It's just in comparison to his teammate, it looks like he's not running all that Yeah, he's well. still in the top 10. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I guess it's all relative. DJ, that's the key. You talk about managing expectations for Joey Logano. I mean, he came here last year ran the only one race here last fall in August, qualified third, finished sixth, and they were concerned about uh, maybe having a disappointing day. 
Well, and it is. You have to understand that you know they're accustomed to winning with this race car. But let's uh, let's look at the drivers that were driving it: Denny Hamlin, Tony Stewart, Kyle Busch. Yeah, these guys are. are it, the ones that aren't champions are going to be, but they've won cup races, so they have a lot more time in these type of race cars. So uh, we expect a lot again out of him, and he's going to not going to disappoint us uh, as we go on forward. This is for a spot right here with Greg Biffle and Brian Vickers. I mean, Brian Vickers had a great run in the middle part of the race, but he's they've adjusted on this car now. He's just not as good as he was, but he seems like as they run long runs, his car seems to come around. Yeah, you're right. That's when it seems he just doesn't have the speed at the, the beginning of a run. So he can get right to the bumper of Greg Biffle there. So his car really going through the center of the corner, but he was a little late getting back to the throttle that particular time. Looks like he's wanting to run the bottom, and that's where Biffle is. So it's going to make the pass a little more difficult. He's going to have to ease out of it a little bit more, not get quite as close there and try to pick the throttle up to make that pass. You can see he gets right there again. Whoa, he's, they're going to oh, make some contact right yeah, there. Definitely. Oh, uh -oh. there goes Vickers. And all the way on the ice. Lock it down, lock it down, lock it down. Go to the bottom, go to the bottom. That's how not to do it. Hold on to it right there, lock the brake. Roll it behind you here. Second caution flag of the day, and Brian Vickers trying to make the pass. Greg Biffle trying to protect the position. He was just trying to force his car down on the bottom side of the racetrack, try to get that spot or actually get the position on the racetrack. He felt like if he could get that position going in, that Greg would have to give it up. Yeah, and he got, actually got down on the apron with the left side tires, and then as Biffle came down a little bit more, it forced him to turn the wheel a little bit more, and that's what got him loose. You can see here, Biffle's just going to his spot. He actually gets down two wheels. Vickers has all four tires below the white line, and there's just not much grip there. And as he had to put more wheel trying to stay off of Greg Biffle, the car just got away from him then. We're on board here with Brian Vickers. See his car's really fast down into the corner. You can hear him getting that throttle trying to play with it. Lock it down, lock it down, lock it down. He was out of control by then. Go to the bottom, go to the bottom. Well, the good news is he didn't make contact with the wall. They can uh, beat that fender back out, get some tires on it. Hey, we needed a caution anyway. <laughs> Second yellow flag of the night here in uh, Auto Club Speedway of Southern California, and the lucky dog will actually go to the 11 car, Scott Legacy Jr. And he will be, he was running in 15th position. He will now be able to get back on the lead lap. He was the first car being shown one lap down. Here is Lucky Dog free pass. Yeah, Scott had done a nice job. He had battled Michael Walter for that spot uh, early in that run and, and kept the spot away from him. So he did a nice job there to get back on the lead lap now. See, not much damage at all right there. Just a little bit of uh, rub on that right front. Get in here and get some tires. Yeah, he's actually coming in early. You can see he's got flat tires before it, one of the tires comes apart and messes up the body of the race car. He'll have to start at the tail end of the longest line here for pitting too early. You see the uh, wedge wrench going in the window. That's actually the track bar they're adjusting. You think that's because he's saying a little loose? Yeah, I think might be. <laughs> uh, I know he was loose underneath Greg Biffle. He'll start toward the back of the pack because uh, he did come in early, and here are the leaders' pits as they're waiting on Carl Edwards, Kevin Harvick, and, and they, this these guy's guys. Crew. Yeah, these guys here, Kevin Harvick and Carl Edwards, need to work on their cars. And Jeff Burton try to do something to try to catch this 18 car, Kyle Busch. What do you do? You got to do something. I don't care what it is. You got to adjust on the race car. Don't just take it. You got to do something. Might want to run down to the 18 pits and pull a plug wire off or something. <laughs> yeah, that'd work. Let's go down to Vince. Well, Shane Wilson reminding uh, Jeff Burton, 55 mile per hour on the uh, pit lane. They are going to snug up the right rear. Right side track bar adjustment. He says it's turning through the corners good, but just a little more grip in the rear. Jamie? No adjustments for the 18 car. Four tires and a small piece of tape on that front grill. He said, I like it. Down below, you see the 16. Greg Biffle said the car is better. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. He said it's getting tighter as it goes. Shannon? Carl Edwards says he thinks he feels the vibration in the right front. He's still a little bit tight. There's a track bar adjustment. Four tires for Carl Edwards in that 60 car. There comes the 18. And it'll beat Carl Edwards off. And Jeff Burton is third. Reagan up a couple of spots. Great pit stop. By the bunch there, Mike Kelly and the six crew under caution. And again, Kevin Harvick will lose a couple of spots on pit road. Back with the green in a moment. 
The NASCAR Nationwide Series from California. Our coverage presented by GoDaddy.com on a beautiful Saturday evening in Fontana, California. Looking down on the speedway with our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. For track-tested technology, get there on Goodyear Innovation. How about that? Wheels on a blimp. That's innovation. <laughs> that is pretty good innovation. No doubt about that. But boy, what about some bad luck for Justin Algar. He gets caught for speeding, entering, and speeding, exiting. He's running 10th. A lot of track positions he's lost now. And a little repair work going on on the front of the 20 car for Joey Logano, Shannon. Alan, a little front end damage for this 20 car. They don't know what they hit. They, Joey Logano said under one of the cautions, he saw something fly up from the car in front of him. He thought it might have been a piece of tape at first, but there's definitely a hole in that front end of the car. So you see those guys put a little tape on there just to get them all fixed up. Might have been one of those bits and pieces from Michael McDowell's engine that were bouncing around the racetrack I before. Absolutely could have been, but as you see now, about 55 laps to go here, we're going to have the cream rising to the top. You got Kyle Busch, Edwards, Burton, Reagan, Biffle, and Brad Keselowski throwing a little bit of Kevin Harvick, Stephen Wallace, and Jason Leffer. The boys are up front and ready to go to work. But they have not been able to do anything. <laughs> it's going to change right now. With Kyle Busch so far, Doc, he's led all but three laps, and he's coming to a restart that'll be with 55 to go. Thanks, guys. 15 cars on the lead lap, and he just saw Joey Logano by virtue of that late pit stop in the tape. He will be the last car on the lead lap. Well, does Edwards, uh, Burton, Reagan, those guys may have something for Kyle or not? I haven't seen any evidence of it so far. I think they've been playing possum a little bit with him, so he wouldn't <laughs> adjust on that car. Yeah, we'll see. Most possums I've seen are dead. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask Brad if he'd been seeing something too. If the cream's going to rise to the top, I think it's already got up there on this uh, with this show. So we go back to green. Kyle Busch leads him down. Carl Edwards needs to hang as long as he can, and Kyle just pulling away. Jeff Burton trying to uh, may see some bipartisan cooperation at the front of the field between Ford and Chevy just to try to hang with that. Yeah, together. they got to do something to try to catch Kyle Busch if they can work together here. And one thing that you can do here, I mean, if, if Jeff Burton looks to be a little faster, maybe Carl Edwards will let him take a shot at Kyle Busch. Brad Keselowski, we talked about his bad luck here. He's having a great run tonight. Don't want to jinx him. He's fifth right now. And in jeopardy of losing a spot there as Biffle moves in behind him. Oh, Doc. I believe you well, did. Ben, I believe you jinxed you. him. Stay high there. The 16 just flat wrecked him. Oh, that is just too bad for Brad Keselowski. I had to open my mouth, didn't I? Jason Leffler got a piece of that also. Got the right front and right now, side of his car. These guys think that Greg Biffle is the one that got into Brad yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't know what to do any different than that, guys. There's yeah. a damage on the right front of Leffler's Toyota. He was being shown in the uh, sixth position. Another one of the cars on the lead lap. Kozlowski's uh, Chevy was up high, and it looked like Biffle was trying to make a move to the inside. Let's watch the contact. Well, I'm Biffle just flat wrecked him right there. I don't, you know, I'm sure he didn't do it intentionally, but he definitely got into the back of Brad Kozlowski and turned him around. Yeah, Jason Leffler, unfortunately, just the wrong place at the wrong time. This is what Brad Kozlowski felt. Think he's right with you there. Stay high there, the 16 just flat wrecked him. Well, uh, Dang, where are you getting that for, man? Do not to him. So more to Jason Leffler here, you can see, he can't see a thing. Be a smoke there. That's got to be a helpless feeling, not knowing where to go. Yeah, it really is. You don't have time to turn. You don't know exactly who's below you. You can't turn it. Just unfortunate. There's the damage. Uh, by the way, nice move by Stephen Wallace to get by on the inside of Leffler. Let's uh, try to get uh, that car repaired and getting back on the racetrack. There is the 16 of Greg Biffle, the three-time winner here. And NASCAR nationwide competition. He's got a little damage on the front of his car. He's got a hole in the nose. You may have to address that. Brad Keselowski had uh, never finished better than 32nd at this racetrack in five previous visits. That was all going to change tonight because he was running fifth until a moment ago. 
And now the damaged car being repaired. Under caution, number three here at uh, Auto Club Speedway in Southern California. Contact between the 16 car of Greg Biffle and the 88 of Brad Keselowski. There is the leader. There is the 16 car on pit road. Let's listen in uh, to their radio. I just hit the side of him a little bit. He started down the racetrack because he was loose. But uh, I don't know. Probably my fault, but I had to look at it. Yeah, it looked like he might have pedaled a little bit there or something. You see that contact from right behind the 88. Now we saw some penalties invoked last week at Daytona uh, for contact uh, involving the 38 of Leffler. Would this involve possibly a NASCAR penalty? Well, it's a little, kind of a little bit different here, Doc, because these guys are just racing hard, and there didn't look like there was an intent there to wreck, you know, try to wreck each other. I think they're just getting together and uh, racing hard, and we're talking about a matter of inches. Jamie. Yeah, and there's no NASCAR officials down here, so they're not looking at Greg Biffle as being at fault, but you see he's still in his pit box. He's pulling out now. They filled it up with fuel for tires, but he did have some right front damage, pulled out the fender and put some bear bond on there, guys. He's out. Thanks, Jamie. And DJ, when we look at that slow motion, did it look to you like maybe the 88 car might have stepped out just a little bit in front of the 16, or, or is it hard to, hard to tell? Yeah, we heard the spotter talk about it. it looked like he had to pedal a little bit, and what that meant is he had to get out of the throttle just a little. And that can happen. This is NASCAR racing. As we see it right here again, uh, Keselowski doing, going down the back stretch. You see Biffle in behind him. But this is going to happen. All of these cars are pretty loose, especially on these restarts and as they have fresh tires on. Greg got back to the throttle. He was expecting Brad to be that. And it's going to happen. You know, uh, nothing intentional there on, on Greg's part. It's unfortunate, yes, uh, but it, it's been a part of our sport for a long, long time. And again, uh, for the fans wondering about penalties, the penalty NASCAR invoked last week at Daytona. Uh, when we talked to the officials in Garage this week. They said they, because they thought that was, was intentional. Uh, there is incidental contact, as you said, in part of racing all the time, uh, and there is no intent involved. And that's, uh, for those of you who know, the two drivers involved there, we've got to believe that, that was just simply a racing accident. Yeah, and there's always going to be at the minimum of two different sides to every story, <laughs> every one of those. But uh, uh, yeah, again, it's unfortunate for Brad Keselowski and uh, Jason Leffler that uh, it uh, tore up their race cars. But uh, again, it's always been a part of our sport. For you uh, fans uh, that have been watching here, watching uh, the J Junior Motorsports team, Brad Keselowski, by the way, back in 29th position now, showing three laps down after those uh, repairs on the car and uh, he will go to the tail end of the longest line they had a penalty for too many men over the wall while trying to make those repairs yeah he did that and we didn't see many guys on pit road here they still in a position they can't make it uh, from this point no it's still it's 50 laps to go and it'd uh, be a big time stretch to try to make 50 laps so that's why you didn't see a lot of them come down One hundred down, fifty to go. It is Kyle Busch, Edwards, Burton, Reagan, Harvick, and look who's up in sixth position. After getting a lucky dog, getting back on the lead lap, Stephen Wallace doing a heck of a job in that sixty-six car. He's done a nice job all night. He's he's driven the car to whatever the capabilities were at that time. When it wasn't handling the very best, uh, then he backed off low. They adjusted. And now they've got him up in the top ten. Kyle Busch has just been so good on these restarts. These guys can't even really get to his bumper. They get down into here. This is where Carl has had a, a difficult time. This is where Kyle really kind of stretches it out. He goes through the corner so fast and carries that speed off the corner then, and that's the last they see of him. Joey Logano in the 20, that is for position as he goes down on the inside and goes by Stephen Wallace. Yeah, that's a position you have to be really careful too. These cars get side by side down into the corner, takes the air off of that car on the inside. Can get really loose in that uh, position. Split, or split David Green right here, three wide. David Green being shown one lap down back in 19th spot. Give a call to the 11 car, Scott Legacy. You see him there, the highest running rookie competitor right now. He's being shown in the top 10. This would be his first ever top 10 finish in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Vince. Well, Scott Legacy qualified 23rd, and he was very disappointed with that. They thought they had a much better car. In fact, he said it felt even slower than 23rd. He said, but hey, we'll look on the bright side. At least we can get the hard charger award. <laughs> he might just get it. He is having an outstanding run. Look at 
Brendan gone, left side of your screen. He's headed to Vegas early. Look at that car <laughs> way up across the racetrack. He's been on pit road four or five times there on that last caution. Adjusted on this car. Looks like he's, he's done something to help it a lot. He's got this thing really working in this top group. Yeah, don't look now, but Brian Vickers, after that spins, got back up to eighth spot and trying to pass Joey Logano for the seventh. Vickers on the bottom. Here goes the Chevy of Brendan gone up high, and they're squeezing up in front of Logano. That was two different lines in trying to pass Joey Logano. Wasn't Vickers down on the apron and Brendan gone up there right against the wall? That's what I love about this racetrack. It has so much room and so such a wide racing surface, and that, that's not wide enough. They use the apron. <laughs> 75 feet wide, this racetrack here in California, and a 15-foot apron. They're using all of it. Yep. Here we see the front of the field. There's Kyle Busch. He's stretched out to almost a second-and-a-half lead over Carl Edwards again. See Logano now trying to work that high groove. Yeah, he was getting past when he was running on the bottom and, and a lane up, so he decided to try something different. He saw Brendan Gone utilizing that. Shannon? Joey Logano right now saying that that car is bad, bad and tight. But you guys were talking a little bit earlier about how well Kyle Busch is doing here today. And of course, the teammate Joey Logano a little bit further back in the field. I spoke with Dave Rogers, crew chief for Joey Logano this week. He told me that they have a new approach coming into this season. He said last year he used to try to put Joey in the car with either Kyle or Tony Stewart setups. He said this season I'm going to let Joey do what he wants to do. I will adapt the car for Joey. It is his ride. That's always the best approach, I think. Uh, you know, when you got a rookie driver, sometimes they don't really know what they're looking for. So you try to just lead them in the right direction and maybe put a setup that a veteran has developed. But uh, Joey's got enough experience now, knows what he's looking for in the car, and I think that's a good approach. And in yeah. fairness to him, last year, DJ, you know, he could focus totally on the NASCAR Nationwide car. Now he's uh, full-time in Cup, so he has to go back and forth. That's, that's got to be tough on anybody, particularly when you're 18 years old. Yeah, it is difficult, but uh, what they're trying to do is just get him seat time, and that's going to benefit him more. You heard him talk about his car is very tight right now. He's moved up the racetrack. It, running the bottom, you have to put more wheel into it. You have that tight condition that really slows the car down. So, you know, he's smart enough to realize when he has to move around and when his car is not working exactly right, move around on the racetrack to try to find some more speed. Just like Brendan Gaughan's doing, he's moving up way up the racetrack now, still working on Brian Vickers. Brendan Gaughan told me in the garage here yesterday, he said, I love this racetrack. I've won twice here in the NASCAR West Division. I finished second and third in the trucks. Brendan Gaughan finished fourth in the cup car here back in 2004. Yeah, on the left side of our screen there, we see uh, David Reagan taking away that third spot from Jeff Burton. David Reagan is a person, a driver that we've talked about is going to win this year, uh, whether it's in the Nationwide Series or the Cup Series or both. He's looking to get that first victory. My vote would be both. Yeah, I think, yeah, very talented driver. See Brendan gone there working that high side still. That's Michael Annette in the 15 car. He right now is the first driver a lap down in the 16th spot. Michael doing a heck of a job in a backup car. If you're losing their primary car and a wreck in qualifying. You can see right behind Brendan gone there is Joey Logano. He he moved up the racetrack after Brendan gone past him and he seems to have picked up quite a bit of speed. Brendan gone uh, going home next week to Las Vegas. He will be our in race reporter and uh, boy if he can get his first uh, top five finish he'll be pumped. He's already he's pumped anyway. He's pumped anyway. <laughs> I was down in the garage yesterday and talking to him. It's so much fun talking to him. I mean he just has so much enthusiasm and appreciation for this opportunity that Rusty gives. We were talking about the paint scheme how close it was to, to Rusty's uh, car there in those days and uh, he was just so pumped about that as we see this battle ongoing for the third spot. Jeff Burton trying to take it back from David Reagan. Tom Groove seems to be the, the way some of these guys are used to be able to make the pass uh, here in the late lap. And yeah, they're just looking for anywhere that their car will go fast. See Burton, he was trying to make that pass down on the inside. But David Reagan's making that middle to top Groove work a little bit better. See, he carried a lot more speed down the straightaway by utilizing that. The record for the most laps led here in the NASCAR Nationwide Series car is 144 by Kyle Busch back last August. Folks, he has led right now all but three of the 110 laps. He can break his own record if he hangs on. Back in a moment. NASCAR Nationwide Series at California, presented by GoDaddy.com, where you can make the web your domain with a .com name for less than a buck a month. 
and in part by Nationwide Insurance, official auto insurance partner of NASCAR. With 37 laps to go, you look down on the Auto Club Speedway of Southern California from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear for track testing technology. Get there on Goodyear Innovation. Kyle Busch continues to dominate. A couple things to acknowledge here on the not so positive side. Uh, uh, there'll be some talk tomorrow, I'm sure, about the size of the crowd here tonight. Disappointing would be a fair, fair word to say. It's a little bit disappointing. There's no doubt about that. When you look at Daytona, we had big, big crowds and everything looked good here. But you know, everybody here in California are really suffering right now. I mean, they're having a tough time. But still, we got a lot of race fans out here. They're really pulling for these guys, and the racing on the track's been real good. Except for that guy right there, <laughs> stinking up the show like Mr. French used to say. <laughs> The, the, the people that are here tonight, uh, Brad, are seeing a guy who really, he, he has a chance to make some history here this weekend. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, we, we knew when we came out here it was going to be a little bit difficult fan-wise. But, hey, I tell you, this guy right here, Kyle Bush, has been outstanding. He's had a super day today. Uh, you know, the truck series obviously run away with that right now. He is walking the dog in that little uh, nationwide hot rod. So let's see, two laps of qualifying this morning on this two-mile track of the nationwide car. The 100-lap uh, Camping World Truck Series race, he ran 40 five laps of Sprint Cup Series final practice in that car today. Uh, then the 300 mile nationwide series race provided he gets to the checkered flag. That'll be 594 miles on this racetrack in one single day with another race to run tomorrow. I'll tell you one doggone thing, Alan. As much money as this guy has been a winner, too, he can help pay the stimulus bill. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> he loves to race. There's no question. Yeah, he loves to race. He's doing a great job out there. You know, you know whether you love him or hate him, he's, he, he's fun to watch. Kyle up by 2.4 seconds on Carl Edwards, 6 seconds on this great race for third place. Jeff Burton in the 29, and David Reagan in the 6, Kevin Harvick in the 33, also there in the mix. Vic, uh, what's uh, Burton saying? Well, Jeff Burton has felt close all night to make a run on that 60 maybe for second place and then deal with Kyle Busch if they get an opportunity. But right now they're having trouble getting a handle of the car. They made a track bar adjustment on their last pit stop trying to get some more rear grip. And instead, Burton says it hurt the rotation through the corner and gave them no more additional rear grip. So they've got uh, some adjusting to do again on their final stop of the night. They're going to be about five laps shy on fuel. Doc? Thanks, Vince. So they will be making one more pit stop tonight, and uh, I guess they're going to throw what they can throw at it to try to be able to see if they can run down Kyle Busch. By the way, you're talking about records as you watch this battle. Kyle, no driver has ever won two National Touring Series races in the same day in NASCAR history. And as you heard earlier, that Kyle Busch led 95 of 100 laps early today to win the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race and has dominated here and, and is now 33 laps away from making NASCAR history. And no one has ever done the triple in a single weekend. I was getting ready to say, it's a good thing it's not three races today. <laughs> Wouldn't break that one too. Yeah, he'd be in it. And isn't it amazing that, especially over last year and, and now the start of 2009, how many times we talk about different records and the guy that we talk about breaking all of these records or setting new records is Kyle Busch. A uh, young man is just phenomenal behind the wheel of a race car or a truck, whichever the case may be. 23 years old, and we thought he may be on his way to his uh, first cup title last year to dominating the regular season in NASCAR Sprint Cup. Yeah, he's not even old enough to come out here and rent his own car. He, you know, here he is whipping <laughs> these guys around this racetrack in whatever he gets in. And we talk about Kyle Busch, too, and he has really good crews in, in all of this making this happen. I mean, you know, the driver obviously has to get in and do a good job and, and do your part whenever you have cars that good, but uh, he got some really, really good people. Jamie? Well, DJ, you guys were talking about, you know, he's fast on the racetrack, but he's also been great in the pits tonight. In three pit stops, he's been in the 13 second and 14 second mark. Why? You're looking at a sticker on the right there. It's an all-star lineup. These are all guys from the cup side. However, some of Denny Hamlin's guys some of Kyle's guys, and of course some of Joey Logano's guys all getting together to pit this car tonight. And so far, so good. Jason Ratcliffe told me this is the plan all season long to keep these cup guys here to bring home a championship. It's very important not only for Joe Gibbs and Kyle Busch, but really, DJ, for Toyota to show up well. That's why it's, for, it's very important for Ford and Dodge and General Motors to run well when they go to Detroit. But this is the headquarters, Torrance, California, for Toyota, TRD in Costa Mesa. It is a home game for them, and they want to protect the home turf. Yeah, they really do. And, and the drivers were out here this week, uh, had their big deal uh, at TRD. And 
and uh, it is very important. We see sixth place here, uh, changing hands. Joey Logano uh, goes around David Rudman, take that sixth spot away. So he's working out. At, at best thing probably happened, we'll see him, Brendan Gaughan, up on the top side of that racetrack. And uh, Joey's really making that work as he makes his charge back towards the front. But very important for uh, everyone at Toyota. Dave, what's going on with David Rudman? DJ, he's actually been trying to take that sixth position from Joey Logano for about 10 laps here. Doesn't look like Joey wanted to give it up there, but Rudman finally buying the 10 car. Now they've spent a couple of extra times on pit road. One, to put that hood pin back in on the left front of the car that you guys talked about earlier. They put a piece of tape on it to make sure it held. And they also, avoiding the 88 wreck, they came down on the grass and they had to repair just a little bit on the left front of that car. He's moved up steadily since the restart, picked up four spots, and they're about seven laps shy on fuel at the end of this race. Well, we are hearing the leader will be coming on pit road in about nine laps, so we will take our last pit stop and head out for a commercial break and come back and catch final pit stops and the final laps here of the NASCAR Nationwide Series race presented by GoDaddy.com. Stay with us. And we invite you to join us next Saturday, 4 o'clock Eastern Time, ESPN2. We go to the show capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, and what a great one we had there a year ago in front of a crowd of over 120,000 NASCAR nationwide fans. Mark Martin on fresh tires in the final lap. A little nudge of the 60 car, Carl Edwards and Brad Keselowski. Mark took the win. Two years ago, the final lap battle was Jeff Burton and Kyle Busch. Always fun to go to Las Vegas and watch the great NASCAR nationwide series action. Total domination for the day for Kyle Busch. Last year, he and his teammate Tony Stewart in the two nationwide races led 282 of 300 laps here in the two races. Fifteen cars on the lead lap. Michael Walter being shown as the final car on the lead lap. Here's a car running 12th. Last pitted on lap 100. That would make 50 laps that he could uh, if he could make that on fuel he can make it all the way to the end and uh, he may be able to do that. Is that right Vance? Well Chad Walter the crew chief for Justin Allgaier he is really sweating it as they're figuring out the fuel mileage. He told me about 10 laps ago they're a half a lap short. They came in and topped off on lap 100. Clearly their strategy trying to conserve fuel. They tell him Allgaier on the radio save fuel at every opportunity. They believe they're going to make it to the end if they can just save a little bit more and that's the only car I've come across along pit lane that believes they've got a shot at making it to the finish. Well Vince that's the only car that pitted uh, at lap 100 that, on the lead lap that can make it. The rest of the guys last time they were on pit road was lap 92 so he has an eight lap cushion as you look at the fuel gauges right here you see how Justin Allgaier by our calculations would have uh, a little more fuel than the two liter. Chad Walter the guy he's talking about is the he has a mechanical engineering degree from Cornell. On I the Ivy League. He probably knows how to figure gas mileage then. You, you think? Oh, we've got <laughs> trouble here. This is going to change everything. This is Greg Biffle. All of that. That's Greg Biffle up against the wall, bringing out caution now for the fourth time tonight. See, so he's had some hard contact with the wall with the left side. There's Jack Rao. She, uh, Sure you're disappointed with that. See if we can see what happened again to the 16 car. Looks like it just just turned around on Greg there, getting in the corner. Actually, in the middle of the corner. You know, we showed you earlier that that happened in practice yesterday for him, coming out of turn two, that the car got loose. He was trying to run that high line and. It's like he's trying to get the car going, away. but he can't, can't, can't seem to get it started here. Taking his gloves off. Yeah, he was running in seventh position on the lead lap, and now he'll need a, uh, some help from the record to come pick up that car. And that means that all these guys will be able to make their final stop under the caution. Everybody's going to get tires now. Only shot now, and Carl Edwards has that number one pit stall down there. 
If he can get a good pit stop right here and maybe beat Kyle Busch off pit road, that's one thing that could change the complexion of this finish. Yeah, then we'd have a pass for the lead today, something <laughs> we hadn't had probably. But, uh, yeah, that would make it a little more exciting. You know, Kevin Harvick's worked his way back up into the fourth spot. He seems to have a really good race car, but he's had some troubles on pit road too, losing a couple of, or three spots every time that he's gone in. The last stop, remember, Carl almost beat the 18 out of the pits. It was really very, very close. And he's a lot closer. He's right on the bumper of this 18 car coming in. So this is going to be his shot to try to beat this car on pit road. Free pass went to the one car, Mike Bliss. He was the uh, first car lap down. He will be able to get back on the lead lap. He worked a long time to get by Michael Annette to get that spot. He paid off for him right here. Yeah, he had that flat tire earlier in the night whenever he cut down that left rear when they just changed two right side tires. And then he cut down a left rear. So good break for Mike Bliss and his team. We just joined our coverage. We've had three leaders, four lead changes. It's been a Kyle Busch night. He's led 126 of 129 laps thus far. He started on the outside of row one after dominating the uh, truck race earlier in the day, leading 95 of 100 laps. So it's been a, uh, a day that most drivers would uh, dream about. You bring two different kinds of race cars to the racetrack and uh, dominate in both. He's yeah. dominated, but he's still got a little bit of work to do here. Yeah, I didn't see all of uh, the cup practice, but so far nobody's passed him on the racetrack today. <laughs> All right, let's see what's going to happen here on the finals pit stop. The money stop. Dave. David Rudeman gives up six position. In addition to the Sunoco fuel, they're going to put in his car in the top of your screen. They're going to change four tires, take the air pressure down in the left sides to help the car turn. Vince. Jeff Burton in the car 29, still two free. Four tires, some splash of Sunoco fuel. They're going to go up a pound on the right side air and a right side track bar adjustment for this final stretch run. Jamie. Watch this all-star crew go to work on Kyle Busch's car. Two tenths of an air pressure adjustment in the right front. Four tires and fuel. Shannon? Jamie, it's just going to be one can of Sunoco for Carl Edwards in the 60 car. He still needs to be a little bit freer. They're going to go one round down on the right rear wedge and four tires for the 60. Let's see what's going to happen. Is the 60 going to get it done? Here he comes. There comes go, Kyle. Go, 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 go. Well, it was close. Oh, close. It was close. I heard numbers say that Carl Edwards got it off pit road. Now, he was spinning those tires. He might have burned those tires up getting <laughs> off the pit road, but he got there. He's only got 20 laps to go here, so we he can need use a reading a bit. on that. We need a reading on that. Get that official. Yeah, this is important right here. They want to know who 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 beat who to the line. And right here, you see, it's definitely Carl Edwards. Yep, yep, 60 car. Great, great job, guys. Nice stop by those guys. <laughs> Uh, they got Dan Stillman and the boys getting them fired up down there. Hey, we, they're saying, we've done all we can do That's here right. now. It's up to you, Carl. <laughs> we put you out there. That's now you got to right. stay there. <laughs> yeah, it I don't think it's going to be that easy. Get five points here. That's Dan, St Dan Stillman sitting right there beside Jack Roush, crew chief. We're going to be talking a lot about this battle throughout the year. These two guys are the two cup guys that are running the full schedule in the nationwide series. So we fully expect them to be the guys battling for the championship. It should be fun getting all the way to Homestead and watch it. Not only these guys, we should have some other cars involved, some other guys running full time in uh, the series. So it should be fun to watch. 99 car, by the way, we're told will start at the tail end of the longest line. Michael Waltrip uh, had some equipment taken out of the pit box. Kevin Harvey coming off pit road in third position, so a pretty good stop for his bunch. Let's talk to him. Kevin Dale Jarrett, the SPN, you have him? Four, Dale. Well, looks like we uh, had a good pit stop that time. Got you in a position here. Have you got anything for those two guys in front of you? Uh, I hope so. We've uh, left the gas out of the thing this time. Uh, we've been really loose at the beginning of the run, so uh, hopefully we can, we can get going here. If we can get going uh, halfway through the run, we're fine. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, the guys rebounded, had a good pit stop, and Reem Chevrolet's been good all night. So you, you're fighting loose mostly. It, does that make you have to move around on the racetrack any, Kevin, or have you pretty much been able to run the car still where you want to? Well, I, I, it kind of takes away the option to move around just because it's so free. You know, it's so line sensitive. Hitting the bottom, uh, I can't really go into the middle because anytime I touch those seams, I get loose. So I just kind of stuck on the bottom here. All right, Kevin, thanks for talking with us. Good luck. And explain what he's talking about, leaving the gas out. Well, they only have 20 laps to go when he made that pit stop. And uh, so the thing to do is only put 20 laps of fuel in there. You don't want to put any more than you need because that's just more weight swinging around the back end of the car, making it loose. And this is a great move. And uh, a lot of guys now, that, I mean, you got to calculate that stuff right down to the, to the wire. 
and uh, as long as he's got enough to make it to the end, he'll be fine. And remember, he is from Bakersfield and has never won at his home racetrack. Now let's check in the uh, Kyle Bush pits, Jamie. Well, Kyle Bush's crew came over the radio and apologized for losing him a spot, and this is Kyle's reaction. Sorry about that, man. We have lost one of the battles, but we ain't lost the war yet. No, I know that. I know that. They're keeping their heads in the game, Doc, and we may have a battle on our hands here in the closing laps. Should be interesting to see what's going to happen. And, uh, folks, the rule this year is a single file restart in the final 20 laps. It used to be in the final 10 laps, but now they'll line up single file, which means uh, uh, that car will have a lot of open racetrack there and no, no lap cars on the inside to be able to help hold that 18 off. Hey, you know, generally that the, the double file doesn't bother the leader as much as it does those guys in second, third, fourth, and fifth. So that's going to give those Kevin Harvick and Jeff Burton, Joey Logano, those guys, they don't have to deal with those lap cars as they get down in, so they can run where they want to. So this could uh, get pretty interesting, especially if Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards can get side by side, then that brings a lot of other guys into the mix. So this is going to be fun. Yeah, Carl's going to need to make the back of his car real wide right here because that 18 car has been very strong on these early laps. He's going to be getting down into turn one. That's where Kyle's been so good when he's been out front. He's able to really go through turn the middle of turn one and carry a lot of uh, speed off of turn two and down that back stretch, and he gets himself a gap right from the very beginning. So we, let's see if Carl can hold him off. Now, the other thing is I'm not sure Kyle Bush has shown us everything he's got. He's had this thing <laughs> oh, well in hand all day. Yeah, I, I'll guarantee you we're going to see what he's got now. He's yeah, got, got more, more left. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> and they've called off the restart here because there was some, some debris on the racetrack they got to pick up. Let's uh, check in on the Carl Edwards situation. Shannon. Well, I got to ask Dale, do you believe in good luck charms? Oh, if it's going to benefit me, yeah. <laughs> well, earlier in the race, a little good luck charm for the 60. Drew Blickenserver, of course, Carl Edwards, old crew chief here on the nationwide side. And, oh, yeah, the guy who led Matt Kenseth to win the Daytona 500 last week. He was down here in the pit box. I think, I got Jason. Uh, all the guys in the Roush Fenway camp are definitely looking to Drew for a little bit of luck here today. Whatever you got, anything you can bring up, whether it's luck, uh, smart guys, bring them all in there, whatever yeah. whatever they can do. Everything Drew touches, we're, I'm going to take him to Vegas next week. Hey, man, that guy's on top of the world right now. He's really yeah. doing a great job, and uh, that was a great win for he and Matt Kenseth last week. Really oh. happy for Matt. And for Jack Roush, first ever win in the Daytona sure. 500. 17 laps to go, folks. It's been Kyle Busch's night. There is Jack Roush. His car has dominated the Stater Brothers 300. It yeah, looks like he's still beaming from the Daytona 500, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even thinking about it. He's thinking, <laughs> he's thinking about, about this, this race, race right that's now. Right. You know, that's, he's just such a competitor. And that's he goes from, uh, you know, he puts that behind him. And as great as that was, uh, you know, this is a nationwide race. And he's just as intense about winning it as what he was the Daytona 500. Remember what happened in the final laps a week ago at Daytona. The great finish. They were three wide and pushing and shoving in the final laps. Al Bush and Tony Stewart. Carl Edwards got there in second. You know, Clint Boyd in a 29 car. Got some of the same cars involved. Can we get the same kind of finish? We're going to find out right here. All right, let's see what Carl can do. Can Cousin Carl hold off the kid, Kyle Bush, who's been so stout all night long? Kyle Busch has to be a little bit careful here. If he goes to make a move and it doesn't exactly work, he could lose a spot. And here goes Kevin Harvick trying to go to the inside. Kyle's going to take that spot, though. If he can get that run. Oh, he gets oh, it in. Carl. Here we go. This is what we were talking about. Here comes here comes Harvick on the inside. Harvick down but low. Gets a little drafting help from Legato. There comes a Jeff Burton. Here goes Kevin Harvick for the lead in turn three. He's got it right now. Yeah, but Kyle's going to carry a lot of speed off of this corner. Well, you can see right there, Kyle Busch just floated that car right in the corner. Let, let Harvick get down in there and then just use that exit speed. Look at all the spots that Carl Edwards lost after that little bit of a tap from Kyle Busch. Here comes Logano now in third spot. David Reagan up very high on the outside back there trying to go by Carl Edwards, his teammate. You see Jeff Burton in the fourth spot there. That car sideways off the corner. Look at Reagan all the way down to the bottom of the racetrack underneath Burton. Yeah, and that cost uh, Jeff Burton coming off of there. David Reagan got a run and took that fourth spot from him. 
I gotta think Carl Edwards not happy about the way Kyle Bush made that pass on him. Probably not. I'm doubting Kyle Bush is worried too much about that, huh? <laughs> Until or unless we get a caution flag and Carl can catch it. <laughs> you know, here let's look back there in third. We, we were talking about Joey Logano earlier. Hey, he hadn't been that impressive. There he is. He's taking his car and got up to third spot. That's pretty impressive to me. It is very impressive, but I think he had some damage. We finally saw that where they fixed that nose. And after they fixed that nose, it's been a lot better for Joey. Yeah, battling a car has been pushing most of the night. I don't know that he's gonna win the race. I don't think that. As you see David Reagan trying to make a run on that high side. Uh, Kyle Busch is about a tenth, tenth and a half uh, better than what these guys are right behind. Shannon, how about Joey Logano? Well, they took a big whack at that car on that last pit stop. They changed pretty much everything. Wedge, track bar, air pressure really took a big shot at it right now. Joey Logano, third place for this young man. What a great run tonight. You can see him go back to the high side once again. That's where he really started to pick up some speed on that last run. He's able to hold off David Reagan right there off the turn two. David Reagan's career best finish in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, third at Memphis in this race car that they put a new body on last year. There comes his teammate Carl Edwards digging on the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to try to get around both these guys, but they carry a lot of speed off the corner by being able to carry more speed through the center and get back to the throttle. You can see Carl lost a little bit of ground to them there. Kyle Busch the leader, then Harvick in second. Logano, there comes uh, Logano, Reagan and Edwards, Burton back in sixth, Rudeman seventh, Vickers eighth, gone, and Stephen Wallace in ninth and tenth. Yeah, nice run for Rusty Wallace racing there. Those guys uh, both in the top ten. See, we got to get a lot of credit too to Kevin Harvick's team. They're peaking at the right time here. Yeah. Our in race reporter's doing a great job. This is 11th spot being battled out on the racetrack. Greg Biffle, by the way, checked over and released at the infield care center after having that contact with the wall. He's okay. Jason Leffler, this is a great job by Jason Leffler. He's in the 11th spot right now, trying to hold off Scott Lagsy, but Jason uh, was in that accident uh, where Brad Keselowski was turned. We see the two teammates here battling. This is for the fourth spot. Jason Leffler had a lot of damage to the right front of that 38 car, but uh, has done a nice job of coming back. Carl Edwards knows that in a season long chase for the championship, every single position is going to be meaningful, particularly when it's going to going to have to chase that 18 car quite a few days. He's got 10 laps to go here, and he's still looking. He sees Joe Logano right here. He's going to make a move on him. And then he's got Kevin Harvick before he finally get maybe a look at, at uh, Kyle Busch, who just, just destroyed this field tonight. Yeah, and, and Carl, that little tap kind of broke his momentum and then allowed about four or five guys to go by him on the inside before he could get back in line. And so he just lost a lot of uh, a lot of time. He may have enough time here to get back to second. You see him try to take that third spot from Logano and Kevin Harvick just in front. So he may be able to get back to second. And if we'd have a caution, uh, Andy, as you said, anything could happen from that no, that's, point. <laughs> that's the thing. If he gets to second spot, the last thing Kyle Busch is going to want to see is a green line <laughs> checker. What's our buddy Alan Vester says it ain't over. Uh, uh, ain't over till it's over. Till it's over. That's and, right. Uh, and Carl Edwards still digging. Carl Edwards using seven lanes of the racetrack all <laughs> the top of the track all the way to the bottom in the turn he's doing everything that he can to try to get by joey logano but joey's doing a nice job up on that high side of of really keeping his uh, the momentum up with his car and getting a good run off the corner you can see he he's closing in on kevin harvick a little bit inside of 10 laps to go kyle bush Trying to hold on. Here's the battle side by side. Third position, Logano, and again right in front of Carlett. That high lane seems to work a little bit better in one and two than what it does in three and four. He holds his own in three and four uh, most of the time, but it really seems to work really good right here. He gets down into turn one, and then he can really get back to the throttle and, and get off of this corner. And you see how Carl Edwards can get through the middle of the corner pretty good, but this momentum off the corner really pays off for that high line. You gotta remember Kevin Harvick's pretty hungry. He's never wanted his own race car. Kevin Harvick Incorporated car never wanted his home racetrack in Bakersfield, California. He's doing everything he can. He had that left front down just below the white line there, trying to get as much grip as he could. Here's Carl Edwards trying to take over that third spot.
David Reagan saying you find an opening and I'll follow you through. Here he goes. Oh, really getting down into the corner, taking the shorter way around. Joey Logano really gets that Toyota wound up, though, and as we get down the straightaway, Carl will have to fall back in line. Al Bush has jumped out to a one-second lead over Kevin Harvick again. See him just up in front. He's not as far away, but uh, he's doing exactly what he needs to do as we come to have six laps to go. Harvick in the, the big battle here. Edwards looks to the high side, falls back in line. So he's got his teammate behind him. He can't uh, totally discount the fact that David Reagan, uh, he wants that spot too. It's got to be frustrating for these guys to be able to see that lead and not be able to get any closer. It's like, see Kevin Harvick right here. He's looking right at the back of that car and saying, if I could just get another tenth of a second, I'd have him. Yeah, if he'd just slip a little yeah. bit, he said, I could get to his bumper. History being made tonight at Auto Club Speedway of Southern California. There are the laps led today. Kyle Busch, 95 of 100 laps in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Now those are the laps he's led thus far. No one has ever won two National Touring Series races in the same day in NASCAR's 61 year history. They've never won all three events on the same weekend uh, at a NASCAR race. And Kyle Busch trying to uh, get one record and go for the other one here on Sunday. He just totally dominated both of these races today. And you see him driving, still driving that thing down into the corner, the back ends just hung out. He's just driving this thing. I mean, it's, the car's good. It obviously handles better than everybody else. Doesn't wear the tires. But man, he really drives it hard. See him just slide the car into the corner as he goes down into turn one. That's here. Jason Radcliffe, the crew chief there on top of the box. First time back in a while, and I'm sure he's looking forward to going down here and celebrating this win. Four laps to go for this 18 car. A year ago, Kyle Busch had a record tying 10 victory season, tying the all time great Sam R. He only ran 30 of the 35 races. Had he run the other five and had the same average finish, he would have won the series championship by 17 points. Probably uh, entered into his decision to run the full season this year, knowing just how good this team is, that uh, he'd have a great shot at this championship. See Kevin Harvick here still in second. He's still, still battling. He's driving his car hard. And Joey Logano there in third. He's pulled away from Carl Edwards and David Reagan by a little bit. Kevin Harvey's team made some great decisions, made a great pit stop after having some uh, some fairly slow stops in the middle part of the race that got them behind. But they peaked at the right time. They made a good pit stop and they made the right adjustment here. He's going to have a hard time holding off Joey Logano, though. He's got that high line working. Man, that Toyota gets it down the straightaway whenever he gets that, that run off the corner from that high side. You really have to admire Joe Logano for what he's done because he was struggling with his race car, but he, he moved around the racetrack and found a lane that worked for him with what his race car was, and he's done just a terrific job. And to see that out of an 18-year-old uh, tells you that he has a, a really good feel for his race car and what he needs to do. We can tell Carl Edwards driving his car as hard as it'll go. You see sparks flying out of it getting <laughs> in the corner. Lap and a half away for Kyle Busch. There he comes. See Kevin Harvick now. He's looking it's like a, a Daytona style block. I'm not sure that Joey Logano didn't kind of fake him up. Well, I think he was actually drafting all yeah. of him there to, to pull up to him as much as he could to carry that speed in there and possibly even get Kevin a little bit loose getting to the corner. He knows that Kevin's hey, running that bottom. You can see Kevin's flag. car a little bit tight getting all the way to the wall right there. Flag. White flag is out. We're going to have a great race for second. Great battle for second position here, but here comes Kyle Busch. 23 years of age from Las Vegas, Nevada. Impressive a year ago, winning 21 races across three major touring series. But no one in NASCAR history has ever done what this young man is about to do here tonight. Win twice in a single day. Coming out of the turn, Kyle Busch will do it. Winning twice in one day, Kyle Busch makes NASCAR history. Good job, boys. Like Harvey Kellogg, thank you. You guys are awesome. 
Yeah. You said they're awesome, and they're probably saying the same thing about their driver there. Oh, yeah. Sweep. Yeah, sweep. Yeah. He's the only man can talk about winning them all. You know, just think back to Daytona a week ago, how close he came to winning the races down there. It, it, it didn't work out that way for him, but he's Thank off to another great you. start. Awesome. It might work out for him this week. <laughs> yeah, I'd say there's a good chance. His 22nd career victory in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Jason Radcliffe, welcome back to the racetrack. Said Andy, Kevin Harvick went, uh, did manage to finish second in his car. It's got to be very encouraging for Kevin to, to do that, knowing he's getting closer to winning. Let's go down to visit uh, with the winning crew chief, Shannon. Doc, Jason Ratcliffe's first race back in six months, and your welcome back party is going to be in victory lane. What a great race. What's the most meaningful part of this? Uh, well, believe it or not, I've dreamed about this day for about six months now. So uh, the guys threw me a welcome back party the other night over at Kyle's Motorhome. That was awesome. And uh, to come out here and, and win this one the first time back, I'm just really happy to be back with these guys. It's such an honor to work with them, work with Kyle. Everybody at Joe Gibbs Racing just continues to work hard. Uh, Z-Line Toyota, strong again. All right, Jason Radcliffe, go to victory lane with your guys. Doc? History being made here in Fontana, California, Auto Club Speedway of Southern California. Kyle Busch becomes the first driver in NASCAR history to win two major touring series races in the same day. Can he make another page in history by pulling off the cup series victory here on sunday that's never been done either winning all three in the same weekend his 22nd victory ties him with legends like sam ard tommy ellis and dale earnhardt jr for seventh all time in the series win list a yeah, fairly short amount of time he's going to break a lot of records in this series and the cup series in the years to come Officially, that young man right there has led 238 laps here today. Pretty good day. Yeah. For the fans that were here for both of the races, they saw a lot of talent driving a race car around this racetrack. Now, as we said earlier, this is a very, very difficult racetrack, and I think that speaks volumes for Kyle Busch's talent. Well, a pretty good day for Carl Edwards. Uh, his uh, top five finishes now, 11 in a row. Pretty good streak. Dave. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be better than that, Doc. Carl, you were the leader with 16 to go. Walk us through the restart. I've been having a little bit of trouble on restarts the whole night, but, you know, it's just, it's just racing. I mean, it looked like not, I couldn't see behind me, but um, felt like we were just racing real hard. I think I might have got touched a little bit, but, I mean, hey, it's, it's going for the win, and, that's what the uh, that's what the fans pay for. So uh, definitely disappointed we didn't have a better run at it. This, uh, this Scott Save a Lot Fusion did a did a good job all night. We made it back up there, made adjustments. The guys did a good job, but man, you know Kyle was just uh, in a league of his own tonight. So just glad to be able to hang with him for most of it. It seems, uh, and we're going to go over to Vince Welch, who is with uh, the guy who finished right in front of him. Yep. Vince? Kevin Harvick, when you talk about big picture, this guy had it tonight to work through some pit stops. Your crew delivered when it had the opportunity on that last stop to get you going. How close are you to getting that win? Well, we're, we're right where we need to be. I mean, we're competitive week in, week out. Just got to thank all the guys on this Ream Chevrolet, everybody from uh, Jimmy John's and all the people that helped us with this car. But uh, they, they did a pit stop when it counted there. I had a little bit of trouble in the first first couple, but um, in the end, they did the one that counted. So that's that makes me proud to, uh, to have them deliver in the end. Kevin Harvick, runner-up tonight to Kyle Busch. Doc? Third time that Kevin Harvick has finished second here at this racetrack, at his home track. He's finished second three times, third three times. He's done been on the pole and comes so close. Let's go down to victory lane where Kyle Busch is ready to climb out of that uh, awfully, awfully tough Toyota. And Kyle Busch taking off his helmet getting the hat on. Second trip to victory lane today. It's still sticky where we're standing from earlier. Kyle Busch's first Nationwide Series victory of 2009. Gets the shower from his team. And they are 
are soaked. They're having a great time. Everybody's celebrating, of course, Jason Ratcliffe being back. Kyle, Jason Ratcliffe back on the pit box, your all-star team here. What does it mean to you to have them back? It's awesome, you know, just uh, want to thank Z-Lines Designs, Jim Sexton, he was here tonight, and uh, Toyota, the fans, NOS Energy Drink, uh, all the guys that make it possible, Interstate Batteries, Norm Miller, and, you know, this is just a blast, and this, uh, to run like that here, you know, and to beat guys like Carl and, and Kevin and that, you know, it's, it's pretty special, and to win here twice in one day, that's even more special, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it without all these guys, everybody at the... Joe Gibbs Racing, Nationwide side, Cup side, everybody. I love driving for Joe Gibbs. He's awesome. And uh, JD, he's great too. So uh, I guess you, you can't ever fault anybody or um, you know have any faults when you're sitting here in victory lane. So I mean, that thing was just flawless and I can't thank him enough. And it was great to have Jason back. You know, that really means a lot to us. And we just get through practice quicker, you know, before we would have to text him or call him or whatever and get changes made. But, um, you know, now we can just buzz right through practice and like last night, we only used 15 minutes of the second one, so we were pretty cool. Of course, everybody talking about the record, winning two in one day, Kyle. You're going to get asked a lot, can you make it a trifecta tomorrow? I don't know. We're certainly going to try. You know, that Interstate Batteries Camry on that side was decent. Wasn't uh, wasn't the best today, but, you know, I'm sure Steve's thinking about it and uh, call him after this race, see what I learned, and talk to him a little bit, see if we can't figure something out to make it a little bit better for tomorrow. Well, I think this is just the beginning of a lot of victory lanes for Kyle Busch this season. Alan? All right, Jamie, Kyle Busch, the star of the show in Southern California tonight, and the show is coming to these towns as the NASCAR Nationwide Series moves throughout the early part of its 2009 schedule. Vegas next week, and then it's on to Bristol, Tennessee, Fort Worth, Texas, Nashville, Phoenix, all that upcoming. Of course, next week it is Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Our coverage starting on Saturday at 4 Eastern time with NASCAR Countdown. The spectacular finishes there the last couple seasons, and of course, Vegas is Kyle Bush's hometown. That's a trophy he'd like.